All right, guys. Uh, session number one, Kingdom of Timria. Uh, the yeah. kingdom which uh, more or less uh, worships Lady Luck, uh, Tamora, as she's known in the world of Forgotten Realms and in my kingdom, um, or in my world as well. So we're going to start. Um, we're going to start with Gideon. And uh, actually, I'm going to go from character to character, and I'm going to lay down the scene of what each of you guys are doing, and we will you will see how the party tends to coalesce together and form. Um, now, that being said, um, I'm going to make a bun bunch of assumptions that your character is going to say certain things, and I'm just going to go ahead and narrate it that way. If I say something that you feel like is against what your character does, please speak out and correct me, because you know to get the ball rolling here, um, there's no way you guys are going to know all the dialogue that I'm imagining in my head of what your characters would probably say in these situations. Um, Mm -hmm. And if you want to add and expound on like what I say, then feel free to jump in and role play and you know get into it. That would be cool. So, but otherwise, to to you know to make sure that we kind of progress along and get you guys together as a party, um, mm -hmm. I have to do this. So, right. <laughs> yep. Sounds so good. we are starting in Lux Hold. So, and as you guys know, so Luxhold, um, as you heard me say a little bit ago, um, Luxhold is this big, massive city that is in the kingdom. It's at the heart of Timria. It is the main city. You can consider it to be the capital city. And imagine this very large freshwater lake that is also a natural uh, hot springs, um, which if you read the lore, this hot springs really came about because of the coming of the gods and the breaking of the world and the Talassians that came up and ravaged the entire area as they caused massive earthquakes and just mountains to become valleys and, you know, as they were wiping out the elves from this continent. Um, one of the results and side effects of that is this lake that is just continually heated, and that's because of all the volcanic activity that's going on deep uh, underneath this lake. Um, and there's a lot of it. Um, so... That that's why uh, this lake is just it's very warm. It, it's kind of uh, hot water, and it helps keep this entire valley that Luxhold is in uh, at a very good mild temperature even through the winter. So the humans who have focused on this region to build, um, you know, of course, wanting to build all around the lake. Uh, there are some types of fish that actually have uh, flourished in this environment, and so there is a fishing. Um, economy here in Luxhold where they fish from the seas. They regulate it a little bit. They don't want people to just come in and like take all the fish out. But uh, that's one source of food. But also uh, being high up in the mountains, you can imagine the mountains themselves are just rich with resources. And so there are some neighboring uh, villages. Uh, most of the neighboring villages are halflings. Um, little burrow halflings, different tribes. You know, you got your stout and your tall fellow. So a lot of the halflings that you see in the kingdom of Mystica and Timria, because they are allies with each other, actually, or chances are they originated from one of these halfling burrows uh, around Luxhold. Um, and also, Luxhold, as you can imagine, is probably one of the most concentrated cities with halflings in it. So when you see a halfling, you're not going to be like, oh, that's amazing. What a magical, you know, amazing creature. It's pretty common. Uh, if, you, if you are in Luxhold, you're going to see halflings, um, especially since halflings tend to get wanderlust. And they're expected. Uh, what's that one holiday where, like, the Amish, when they reach, like, adulthood, they go off? And, what's that called? Ram Spring something. Uh, October. You guys know what I'm talking? It's not Ramadan. That's Muslim. Ramadan. Or, yeah, no, Ramadan, anyways. Muslim. Um, there's a name for it. It's escaping me. I, I don't know why I can't think of it right Hanukkah. now. No, <laughs> no, no they, they actually go out and when they're like adults, they go out and just see the world and explore the world with the idea that 
they basically go and live and then they eventually come back and stuff. So that's kind of what the halflings do. They get wanderlust and they just want to go out and explore the world and see what's out there in, world, in the world and what it has to offer. And eventually, when if they survive into their elder years, a lot of times they'll go back home to their roots and just kind of settle down with a nice, quiet life. Um, so there's a lot of mining towns or villages. A lot of these villages, uh, there's mines um, for gemstones, for ore, and other things. So that also, because they're so rich in resources with their, the ore and the mines uh, with, for the gemstones, you can imagine that there's a lot of wealth in Tamria. Uh, it's definitely a pretty rich kingdom uh, when compared to any other kingdom that you guys have played in so far. So uh, Lux Hold, um, you know, it's this vast sprawling city. Uh, tons of things to do. If there is going to be a city with the nickname, uh, it's a city that never sleeps, that would be Lux Hold. It literally is a city that never sleeps. Uh, there are so many people, especially during the summer, uh, the summertime, and that you know, people from Mystica coming to Luxhold to try to strike it rich. You know, think of it as Las Vegas. Uh, you know, the city that never sleeps. That's exactly Luxhold. Um, there's activities and things going on at all hours of the day and night. So, okay. That being said, Gideon, you are a soldier in Lux Hold. Now, you, um, you tend to, you know, you, you don't really put yourself out there. You're a little bit more standoffish and reclusive. So, but once you get a drinking, you kind of drink to excess, and you just enjoy the feeling of just kind of being numb a little bit and enjoying the moment. And whatever happens kind of happens. And you just go with the flow. And a lot of times you wake up in different places. You don't really realize how you got there um, or exactly what happened. Uh, sometimes you have a little bit of a headache in the morning. But that's kind of been your life. And you were living in Hughesbane. So um, why don't you describe a little bit. Who is Hughesbane in your bio? Uh, Hughesbane is essentially someone who took me in once... My father died when I was age 12. Uh, he was a celebrated warrior of the realm and someone that everybody looked up to. He saw that my father had died and I was young in combat, and he said, you know, a big laugh, jolly smile. He said, I'll take you in. He's like, I'll turn you into, you know, pretty much like, don't be so depressed. Don't be so standoffish. Don't be so reclusive. Let me show you. And he taught me combat. And he taught me survival and all that. And he's kind of like a secondary father figure for me. Okay. Um, yeah, so he took you in. And five years ago, you he, he had to leave. Um, you know, he taught you how to fight and how to protect yourself. And he kind of got you into... Um, the, the military aspect, you know, being a soldier in a guard in Lux Hold. And that's been your life for the past five years, just being a guard. You've worked up through the ranks, and I believe you're an officer now. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So you're an officer. Uh, but Hughesbane has been gone for five years, or around five years. And he's let you just stay in his home. Um, you know, he said you can stay as long as you want. And... It's been five years. Now, you have had some contact with him, so it's not like he just suddenly disappeared off the face of the realm and uh, you don't know where he is. Um, he has made contact with you through letters and, you know, messengers. And, you know, he's just been out in the kingdom of Mystica uh, doing different errands. He, it seems like he did for a while hire himself out as a mercenary uh, doing different stent work. He was purposely vague. You can tell in some of his descriptions of these letters that you would read that he, you know, probably maybe for your safety, wouldn't really divulge all the details of his work. <laughs> that um, makes sense. Whether you would approve or not, who knows. But, um, yeah, he's been gone just doing kind of little bits of work, no doubt having quite a few adventures himself. Now, it is, we're starting off, it is 719 year 157. 
So according to the calendar, that is the month of Radian. Um, so it's the seventh of Radian, year 157. Now, yeah, this date is going to closely align with the uh, realm of the Mystica party that I have. So this is going on like pretty much at the same time. Uh, of where we're at with that other party. So the 19th, that would be Aldia. Okay, so yeah, that's what, what we would call a Thursday. Now, you are suddenly awakened. You're in your bed, and your eyes are closed, and immediately you could be like, wow, man, that was such a crazy night last night. I don't really remember a whole lot again, but nothing unusual here. And you hear some heavy footsteps. <clears throat> and you almost hear the sound of, like, armor clinging as someone's walking. <laughs> and then you hear the thud of a large sack hit the floor right by the bed that you're laying in. And you hear this gruff voice speak out. And at first you're thinking maybe you're just still dreaming uh, because you instantly recognize the voice and it's Hughes Bain's voice. He says, mm, what is the meaning of this? Well, I come back after five years and you have winches in my house and you look over and you have completely forgotten and you hear the moan of a woman at your side. And she's just kind of sprawled. Uh, she was fast asleep. But of course, the noise and clamor of this large sack just being dropped down on the floorboards next to you. And you could hear the jostle of like all sorts of equipment and coins and everything just crash down onto the floor. And I'd this like to loud... say something. Yep. I kind of curl over. And of course, I'm very quiet and stoic. I look over and I'm like, mm, figured you'd approve who's vain. Mm, is this what you've been doing for the five years I've been gone? What else is there to do? <laughs> and he says, there's a whole world to see out there, Gideon. And then this, wo this woman, uh, this beautiful woman next to you, she wakes up and she realizes uh, that there's some third person in the room. You know, there's this deep, gruffy voice. And she kind of gives a little bit of a yelp uh, of surprise. And she pulls the covers up around her, and she's looking wide-eyed at him. And he says, mm, good, you're awake. Get your things and get out of my house, Winch. <laughs> um, I'm not now, really... Oh, that's you, anyway. So hold on. Gideon, you, you look over at this woman who seems completely surprised, and you've never seen her before. Um, you don't know her name. You don't know really how she got into the bed with you, but there she is, and you know, Hughes Bain is telling her to get out, and he's calling her a winch, but you don't really care. Yeah. Unless you say, grab, unless you think otherwise. Grab your stuff, get out of here, I don't even know who you are. <laughs> oh, what the? Fucking <laughs> savage. As I, I reach down into my satchel next to the bed, and I'm literally butt-ass naked, there's a, a piece of, like, a cloth or a a silk uh, sheet just barely covering my testicles. And I grab a pre-rolled cig uh, cigar and I put it in my mouth and I light it up and I look at who's been and I say, so what brings you back after all this time? Mm, came to check on things. And he says, and he starts looking around. He says, well, it's good that you didn't burn the place down, it seems. And uh, he pulls up a chair and he sits down. And uh, he says, mm, been gone. Uh, you haven't changed much, it seems. Uh, I hear that you've made officer. Well, clearly you've seen the beard growing and a little heavy. But yes, I did make officer. And... Where have you been? And he laughs a little. Ah, <laughs> uh, I've been around uh, all through the kingdom of Mystica, Mystica, seen many things. In fact... I saw something that, well, you wouldn't believe this. Wait, I got a headache. Just, just give me a second. Just give me a fucking second. 
Here we go, fuck it, sir. Okay, what were you saying, old man? <laughs> and he says, mm, I was up in a city in Mystica. And wouldn't you know it, I look out and I see some pointed-eared folk coming from the water. Some mm. elves coming out of the water into, into the town. And he says, uh, there are many of us who saw it. In fact, they then came through the town and they wanted to see Lady Ariel. Now, Lady Ariel, you guys know, uh, so Kingdom of Mystica is, you know, neighboring uh, kingdom that's friendly. Uh, Timria is more ruled by like a council of different people who just share different responsibilities. Um, Kingdom of Mystica, though, is kind of more closely related to like a monarchy um most are theocracies but the lady ariel who's seen as like the absolute ruler i uh, think of her as like a queen basically over the entire realm but she's also uh believed to be an archon uh, a dwomer keeper so in that respect it's still like a theocracy uh the dwomer keepers have political positions and stuff but she is definitely seen as the absolute ruler of all the affairs of Mystica. So he's describing is how these elves were seeking to have audience with Lady Ariel. And then he goes on and he says, uh, it was the craziest thing though, just a couple days after they left that city, some old foolish men, wizards gone crazy perhaps, started speaking prophecies about how the elves coming back have marked the sign of the times, or the end times, if you will. A uh, bunch of mumbo jumbo, if you ask me, but I suppose you never know. There's been stranger things I've seen. Well, another one of your crazy stories, old man. I've been hearing them for the last 15 years. <laughs> That's, um, 12 years. Well, I don't expect you to believe all my tales, but I assure you that that one is true. Look, and, let, uh, me give, let me get my pants on, then I'll listen to you. <laughs> I would appreciate that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. As he and looks I, away, I usher the other chick out of the room too. I'm like, get out of here. Yeah, they they mm. like quickly were gathering their things, and uh, with the hard stare that Hughes Bain was giving them, uh, they quickly made haste gotta, out of the okay. room. Yeah, and and they they left. So, okay. um. Gideon, uh, so yeah, you get your pants on, and Hughesbane then says, so, are you happy, Gideon? No, I'm not. I've never been happy. You know that. He says, is this what you wish to do for the rest of your life? Drink and women? No, you know I Every want to night? be, I want to become a Timuric knight, just like you, however... Things are boring. I've never had enough training. I don't know what I'm supposed to do. Life passes by. Sun rises. The moon sets. This is bullshit. Actually, wise words, Gideon. And he says, uh, time can sneak up upon you when you least expect it, especially when you get complacent and comfortable. And he what? says, uh, if you want to be a, t a fate lord, then... I'm afraid you need to start acting like it. How old are you now, boy? 25, I think. 25, yeah. 25. 25. Ooh. Well, suppose a lot of men your age have families by now with children. He <laughs> says, this is no way to live. This will not bring you happiness. I suggest you take a hard look at yourself. And if you really, truly desire to be a fate lord, well... You need to start acting like it. You need to start putting those goals first and foremost. I'm assuming that's why you're back. Hmm, well, I did hear word that you were still here. Uh, I am surprised after five years you didn't find something else to pull you away from being just a, an officer in the guard. Like I said, there's many, many things out there in the world and lots of money to be had and lots <laughs> of things to learn. Fine, if that's what you wish, maybe I should do it. Although I don't want to, but this is clearly something that I desire that you see inside. Let's do it. 
Well, it's no secret that Lady Luck wishes for people to attain opportunity and to better themselves. And um, he says, if, if you truly desire to culture her blessing in your life, then I just implore you to think carefully about what it is you've been doing in your life for the past five years. <sighs> for, for time more, uh... I will cat. straight my shit up. Let's do this. Okay, so Hughes Bing comes back. He's a bit upset that you just just for five years you've just been in the guard. Seemingly, from what he's been hearing and uh, hinting at, apparently he's heard reports that from people um, that you basically just drink almost every night. And you don't really put yourself out there to, you know, you're kind of standoffish, right? Uh, you said you're kind of reclusive. So you, maybe you're a bit shy around people. And you, you've had a hard time putting yourself out there for people. And uh, he just says, hey, it's been five years. What the heck are you doing with your life? If you want to do something, if you really want to be a Timurk Knight, you need to grow up, basically. You need to act like you need to be the master of your own destiny. So you guys have a few bit more discussions, but then you realize the time that it's actually past noon and that you've slept all through the morning. And, uh, you know, it must have been some pretty good ale or mead or whatever that you had uh, the night before, kind of a little. Oh, if I could remember, I'd give you the details. Yeah, if only we can just know the details. But <laughs> yeah, we'll spare everyone the, the details. Um. So yeah, so you you know you look at him as like a this father figure, right? Like you just really look up to him, and you do. You want to be a fate lord or a Timric knight, as uh, Mysticans call them. Um, so you know his words just kind of resonate with you. But you spend the next few hours uh, polishing your armor, um, your your sword, or not your sword. You use a mace. Mace, yeah. But okay. I would like to mention that. I'm only somewhat talkative to him because I've known him for so long. Sure. When I get introduced to anybody else, I most likely will just respond with a grunt or just a nod of the head like I don't talk to anybody. Okay. Yeah, that's good to know. Um, so, yeah, so you spend the next few hours just getting ready for your next shift, which is a 12-hour shift, and it's mostly a night shift. Um, you know, from about, like, 5 o'clock to or six o'clock to six um so you know you're just cleaning up washing up just getting ready for your shift and stuff and you have a few discussions with hughes bane and uh he does say after he's been there for about three hours you know he lays down a little bit but then he gets up and he gets ready and he's on his way out the door and he says uh he has a few errands he has to run the night but you know he'll he'll be back um he says he doesn't plan on leaving anytime soon again uh, he just kind of wants to take some time off and relax a little bit. Now, being the month of Radian, uh, this is definitely, uh, you know, one of the the fire months. So it's like at the peak of the summer. So this is the busy time of when Lux Hold is just swarming with activity. Um, you know, definitely being being in the guard here uh, every night is is eventful. You know, when you get people just full of booze and you know with the gambling and the greed and everything else and people fighting sometimes you know basically the guard is always busy and every night is kind of a new adventure among itself so we're going to zoom out there so gideon uh you know with this picture of gideon um by the way what does gideon look like uh well he's it's fairly tall uh, tan, 6'4", six four. Six four, uh, 210 pounds. He's very muscular, tan, uh, scruffy black beard. And you see him mostly with a... When he's not in armor, he's in plain clothes, but you can see him with a cigarette or a cigar or something hanging out the side of his lip. He's got a very cold stare, very standoffish personality. Um, not really friendly to be around for the most part. Doesn't say much. Okay. And so, you know, just imagine, you know, we fade out there with Gideon just uh, getting ready for his next shift of being on guard. Okay, so now we're going to switch to Gil Galad. Or Gil, as I'll probably just shorten it up. Yeah, that's fine. 
Gil Thunder. Yeah, that's what I was okay. thinking. <laughs> <laughs> now, Gil, um, you... Okay, so you're an Asimar, okay? Now, you're from the Kingdom of Mystica. It's not too uncommon to see Asimar in uh, Tieflings, or Tieflings, however you want to pronounce it. I'll just pronounce it Tiefling. Um, in Mystica, in, you know, any creatures that are kind of like magical and like against the norm, which is like humans, uh, they're kind of respected in the kingdom of Mystica. Like anything that's naturally magical or has these magical abilities or there's a sense of awe and wonder with these types of races. Uh, you know, the Genasi, uh, Earth, Air, Fire, Water, all those, like they could do really well for themselves in the kingdom of Mystica because of that reverence and respect that mm. people tend to have. Um, because, you know, wielding magical power is kind of a status symbol in a way. So to be able to just naturally do that just based on your race, that's, that's amazing, right? right? So you're an Asimar. Um, you know, you have your story and your background and stuff. And uh, you're kind of filled with anger. You know, the things that have happened to you, um, which we won't go into too much detail about, but, you know, losing your whole, like everything that you had, all your loved ones, your, your family. Um, to something extremely horrible that you don't quite understand how it happened or why it happened, but you want to find out more, but you know that you're weak and you almost went into this rage and you feel like you almost lost your soul to it. Um, but you have a guide being an Asimar, you have this, this other entity who's communicating with you all the time and well, maybe not all the time, but frequently. Okay. Um, and in dream form, uh, right. This the guide can manifest itself in many different ways on in, with communication, but with you, it, uh, it seems your guide, which you know his name to be uh, Mikel, um, Mikel uses dreams to communicate with you and to help guide you. Um, he barely managed to keep you from losing yourself to this rage and this anger, and he's trying to convince you that look. It, he will help you channel that rage, but you need to be patient and you need to just listen and be obedient uh, to what he tells you to do. Um, and that he, he promises you that if you do these things, that eventually the time will come where you will gain a better understanding and strength and wisdom, and you'll be able to then better channel that, that vengeance. Um, so... To make a living, though. So you were, you know, you've had this issue with making a, a living, and you decided, uh, as chance would have it, you had the opportunity to join this guild called Arcanus Matentus. Now, Arcanus Matentus is a guild whose sole purpose is to provide a service for all of the budding mages of the realm. And so this guild will provide work orders to its members with a decent reward for acquiring the reagents um, of all kinds that, you know, these mages have put in order for. Um, and this has been working out pretty well for you um, as some income. You know, some of these components are pretty wild and fantastic. Only like the most powerful of the guild members ever have a hope to acquire such things. You know, like maybe uh, the tongue of a dragon or, you know, some other exotic components. There's just no, you know that you just have no way to to go acquire components like that. But you do keep try to keep your eyes peeled for anything that might have some sort of value to it for a mage, uh, just like exotic components and stuff like that. Because um, that's what you've been doing for a while. Speaking of which, I was going to talk to you about this. You don't have to, but um, I noticed that you do not have Arcana as a skill. Um, which I guess paladin. So you're you're a paladin. So ch -ch -ch, paladin acolyte. I don't know if I don't think Arcana ever came into those lists that you can learn, right? No, it wasn't. That's the reason why I didn't choose it. Yeah, I think I'm gonna. I think uh, if you had the opportunity to pick Arcana just for the sake of the story, and so it would make sense that you've kind of had this training to kind of keep your eyes peeled for this. Would you be interested in picking Arcana over one of your other skills? Uh, yeah, absolutely. Which skill do you think you would want to get rid of? 
Um, I would probably go away with the skill of religion, because I already know my my devout. Probably a good point, because you really don't care too much about following Mystica or Timria or knowing the details about their tenets and rites. You just know that you follow Mikhail. And uh, so if you want, I'm going to allow you to just replace religion with Arcana. Because okay. I need you, I need, it makes sense that you would be a bit trained in this. Uh, and I need you to be a member of this guild for a reason. Um, okay. So. Sweet. So, a few weeks ago, um, you actually had a dream that Mikhail, your guide, uh, sent to you. And in this dream, you remember this visage of seeing this man walking around these streets. And it was a tall, burly man with a, a thick black beard. And from his vestments, you could tell that he's definitely in the guard of whatever the place this is. And that he had some sort of rank just from the insignia and the marks on his armor um, and the way he carried himself about as he was on patrol, just doing his duties. And you then remember that the voice in this dream, Mikkel's voice was, seek him. And, you know, as soon as that voice happens, uh, your view, it was like you became a bird or something. You just started flying up in the air, but you were zooming backwards. And as it was zooming out and you're getting more of this uh, kind of a bird's eye view of the landscape, you saw a sprawling city surrounding a body of water high in the mountains. And, you know, upon awakening, of course, you had a lot of uh, questions that you had. Um, but you also, what you really remember the most was that you felt this strange feeling inside that this man that you saw in your dream was somehow linked to your future, that he was somehow the link to your path to vengeance and to understand what it is that happened to you, the path that, you know, you know that, you, that that's your goal. That's what you want to do. Um, somehow this man is linked to that. And through asking some questions uh, with other people, you discovered that this town that you saw, or the city around this lake, was none other than Luxhold. So, fortunately, uh, because of your position and your membership in Arcanus Matentis, you learned about a very large merchant caravan that was headed up to um, Timria, to Luxhold. And what's common, so the roads are pretty treacherous. Uh, if you can imagine all these people flocking to Timria to live out their dreams, get rich possibly. Some of them are successful with the games that are be had there and, you know, come back with a lot of money. Well, imagine that's a good target for bandits and other creatures who want the shinies and the treasures for themselves. So those who can afford it, they try to hire a whole bunch of bodyguards, mercenaries, bodyguards, you name it, because the idea is, the more heavily protected or larger force you have of bodyguards, the more likely that people are just going to be intimidated by that and just leave you alone. And that's a pretty effective tactic. And that is what happened here. You um, were able to join one of these large merchant caravans going up to Lux Hold as a guard. And uh, you actually became friends with one of these guards um, who was also a bodyguard on his way up there as well. Um, this was just kind of more of a passing, like, temporary occupation for you to hire yourself out as kind of like a mercenary or a guard to make your way up to Luxhold. But this man, uh, his name is Calvin, with a K. So Calvin, K-A-L-V-I-N, um, you know, you guys make it up this steep road, and you eventually get to where you just see this vast, sprawling city, and it almost like just like in your dream uh, that you had, you, you know, you just see the vast expanse of the city surrounding this water um, as you come up over this rise. And, uh, you know, people start to cheer within your merchant company, like, ah, oh, we made it, we made it. And people are all cheering and all excited. Oh, we made it. Yes. And uh, Calvin walks up to you and he, 
puts a hand on your shoulder and says, Well, Gil, I hope that you find what you are looking for. I wish you the best of luck. And, uh, you know, he gives you a nod. And, you know, you've had some friendly conversations with him. Uh, he, he has a different, or he has a pretty unique backstory himself with how he came to be where he is. But you found that you could trust him. Uh, you, you definitely did not feel any sort of selfish, evil intentions with this guy at all. He's just a really good guy. And that resonated with you really well. Like, you just feel like he's a really good guy that you can trust. And you became yeah. friends with him. You guys hung out a lot, um, you know, around the campfire at night. And as you guys were just traveling along, um, just telling stories. And as you guys see your destination, um, you know, it's approaching like early evening when you guys come into Lux Hold. And, you know, he's basically bidding you farewell. And <coughs> Calvin just says... Uh, yeah, it bids you luck, hopes that you find what you're looking for. And he says, uh, who knows when our paths will cross again. I'll say unto Calvin, I hope it is soon. You are a good friend. If you ever need of aid, seek me. And same with you, Gil. And uh, he gives you a nod. And as the company, you know, going down the main road, uh, there's some guards that meet up front and they ask for people their names and what their business is, you know, if they're merchants or whatnot and uh, what they're selling, because there's different districts. Um, you know, it's more of kind of a, a friendly service there of guards directing people where they actually want to go. Um, so you lose sight of the merchant company. You just, you feel like, okay, there's this guy that I remember from my dreams. I remember what it looked like, this, his face. I guess you're just going to walk around uh, I don't really know what else you could do other than just walk around and just hope to find him. Come find me, Gil. I guess I'm thinking to myself, Mikhail sent me here for a reason. This is my quest. I will look Perfect. for this man. Okay, so um, you you just start roaming the streets and you know, you're know you kind of like a little bit frustrated just the fact that you look at the position of the sun and you realize that there's only a few hours of daylight left, and then it's going to be dark. Mm -hmm. But nevertheless, uh, you do remember that in your dream, come to think of it, you saw some lamp posts with fires in them, and you saw that. And then you realize, wait, it, I think it was dark when I actually saw him in my dream. Maybe, yes, I, I just need to walk and wander as long as it takes until I find him. Hopefully, yeah, hopefully Mikhail will guide you. Mikhail has so, done good for me so far. I'm is there anything else you want to do as you approach the city uh, that you could think of that maybe you want to do, or do you just want to wander the streets? No, I'll, I kind of want to wander the streets, kind of get my surroundings. This is a whole new town for me. Yep. And I kind of want to feel the vibe of the town. Okay. Yeah, as soon as you walk in, you start hearing, like, the vibe of the town is basically you're hearing cheering uh you know all of a sudden there's a burst of cheering of people be like yeah like apparently some people won some money or something um in lux hold there's a, there's a coliseum or an arena there's matches people could go there and they can uh, bet on fights there's there's lotteries there's card games there's dice games there's archery competitions there's other games of skill there's like const there's so many contests and events and things to do Basically, there's so many ways to spend money and to lose it. Um, you know, that, that's Lux Hold. And it's just a city of inter entertainment. Lux you know, Vegas. You, you even hear music awesome. drifting down the street towards you. You're hearing from different buildings. You're seeing just this, uh, this commotion of music as it's just kind of being mixed together, just causing this dissonance, you know, in the air around you just... Uh, but you can kind of you you can tell the mood and the melody of the music, and it's just this constant noise. Like this is a city that doesn't know what quiet means. This is a city that, as you walk to it, you're like, wow, okay, this is pretty noisy. Um, but at the same time, it also kind of brings me joy because I come from a small village, so it's like uh, people here are happy, having fun. Oh yeah, Peaceful. people are definitely having fun. Yep, 
Absolutely. <clears throat> okay. So we are now going to switch to. So now we fade out where Gil, you are wandering the streets and we lose sight of you as you are in the midst of all the buildings and the crowds and the people. Mm. Okay. Kalshin. Mm. Sorry, Ash. I decided to do you last. <laughs> um, That's all right. All right. Drink here. What is that, Ash? You're a hunter? Oh, you look like a savage. Fuck, dude. I'm going to cross <laughs> your path. <laughs> okay. Now, Kalshin. Um, actually, uh, so before we go to you, Kalshin, Gil, what, what do you... Are you still there, Jeremy? Yeah, I'm here. Yeah, so what does Gil look like? Uh, to get a better picture in our minds of what Gil looks like. I mean, he, he's a protector Asimar, right? Yes, he is. But as a typical, as a typical Asimar, unless they're in combat, they're always, they always have a hood over them. Um, you can kind of see my sapphire blue eye glow underneath my hood. Um, but also at the same time, like above my head, in the sense, inside the hood, of course, you see like this faint golden glow. <clears throat> hmm. um, I have kind of lustrous skin if you look at my my chin area, and uh, if my okay. if, if my hood ever does come off, you'll notice a scar on my temple. Um, and I carry this ring on my main hand that kind of glows with a blue hue. The silver ring is that a your sil silver ring? Silver okay. ring, yeah. And Gideon, uh, I believe your eyes. The weird thing about you is you have different colored eyes, right? Like one's yeah, I have one one dark brown eye and one bright blue eye. Yeah, and what's common with a lot of races uh, when when you have like strange combinations of colors with the eyes like that, a lot of people will say phrases like "Oh, they're kissed by Tamora," or you know stuff like that. It's kind of like a good omen, uh, or like you know he's going to be lucky. Uh, and that's just, you know, a lot of races kind of have their own little superstitions and things like that that they say. Uh, you know, like e even Dark Elves have a similar thing where based on the color of the kid that's born, you know, they, it kind of is like a good omen and stuff, like good for the house. Mm -hmm. um, right. So for you, you know, you've, heard, you've even heard Hughes Bane several times, you know, mention that uh, you've been kissed by Tamora. You know, I you that's one of the her. biggest reasons why he took me in. Because he saw that variant and was like, okay, this kid mm -hmm. could be special. Yeah. Um, other than sense. that, um, I guess like right right below my, my hood, I have like a, this metallic silver almost type of hair that sticks out of my, out of my hood. Um, really, bro? You got chest hair? Silver hair. Sweet. Yeah, Sapphire it's not, it's, colored it's eyes and silver hair. And you use a mace as well? A mace and a shield, yes. Mace and shield. And Gideon uses a mace and shield. Mace and shield, yep. We have a lot of mace wielders in the wow. party. And people yeah. may not people may not really guess it, but I'm actually 43 of age. Oh my god, man, you're old. Old fucker, yeah. dude. Wow. You're practically a cougar. Jesus Christ. Yeah, god damn. You can almost start getting discounts. No, I'm kidding. Just kidding. Right. Yeah, I'm, right. I'm, I'm looking to be 160, so F you guys. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kalshin. Let's go into Kalshin now. Right. All right. So, picture uh, inside this building. Uh, there's this small corridor, and there's this board, um, like kind of a board where notes and papers are kind of like tacked in to this mm -hmm. board, like different notices, right? Um, and you're in this building, and you're in this room with this board. Now, this board has a name, and it's called the Finder's Board. Now, Kalshin, okay. you're standing there, and you're just thinking to yourself, hmm. and you're eyeing all these papers, and uh, some of these papers also have next to them a portrait or an artist's rendition of what that person looks like. Right. Uh, different <clears throat> folk from all ways of life here. Uh, if you imagine, like, even some different races and stuff. Um, but all these people... Um, as you were inside the Azure Brotherhood in their 
guild house and you're standing at the finders board there were some people in there when you walked in but they uh, were locked in conversation and they walked out you find yourself alone and there's just some sunlight just spilling in through this window um, casting some shadows in the recesses of the room but there's this finders board before you and you're just looking at all the papers and you're thinking to yourself well I haven't done this a whole lot but the last two were lucrative so you know you've you found, you know, being a bounty hunter and the Azure Brotherhood, um, you, so the Azure Brotherhood, to give some context here, what they are, they're a guild of bounty hunters. And one of the most common crimes in Timria is people who get carried away with their gambling because of greed. And then when they realize that they owe a crap load of money, they think, oh crap, and they try to skip out on it. So the Azure Brotherhood are bounty hunters where they try to bring these people to justice uh, to make them pay. So Timurians oh, yeah. very heavily believe in being held accountable for your actions. And their whole culture and the way their society works, you know, it would fall apart if people weren't held accountable for their actions because they realize that's a huge attraction. People are coming there to try to strike it rich and if everyone didn't just pay up with their gambling debts and their dues and, you know, as a result of their own actions, uh, society would fall apart. So all Timrians have this basic knowledge and understanding that, like, yeah, that's kind of bullcrap that these Mysticans come up here and they think they're above everyone else with all their money, these mages, and then they, like, get carried away and then they skip out on it. Screw them, right? <laughs> so that makes Here comes that makes, dog. That makes Timrians very upset, actually, uh, when they hear about scumbags like this skipping out on their payments and their debts so the azure brotherhood is a key part here is your brotherhood is important because they kind of have a special relationship with the kingdom itself that when you're identified and you show the insignia of the azure brotherhood you um can go into a lot of places and when they realize who you are they kind of don't really ask too many questions, like, say, Dog the Bounty Hunter, right? You see that guy, you know, snooping around and, like, running through some your backyard and he's looking for something. You kind of know what he's about, right? You kind of know, okay, I'm going to stay out of his way. Um, you, you don't want to get involved. Because right. you know he's just doing his job. Uh, mm -hmm. He's trying to bring someone to justice, you know, so... That's kind of the, that's how the whole is your brotherhood is. Now, your success in the guild is completely reliant upon you. You know that right. if you're to sit and do nothing, they're not going to tell anybody to do anything. Uh, it's up mm. to you to go to that finder's board and try to... You pick up work that you think you can do and go and try and do it. And if you don't, you. you don't get paid. You starve to death, it's because, well, you're... Lazy you know, sucker shit. You're, you're lazy. lazy. <laughs> Yeah. So, you've successfully, though, you've successfully brought in two people in it, and it paid, paid pretty decent. Um, you know, yeah. you have some leftover gold from it. You've been living off of it for a bit, but you realize, yeah, I need to go find some more work. Mm -hmm. So you're standing at this finder's board, okay, and you're looking over at all the names and the notes, um, along with their associated bounties of what they're worth, and you're kind of picking down low. The, the ones that are lowest, those literally are the lowest. Yeah. Uh, but they're also the easiest. The right. ones that are a bit higher up are a little bit more difficult. The ones that are really high, they racked up really big, but they're also maybe, they were kind of, people think they're powerful or maybe have a lot of uh, bodyguards right. maybe or other resources, or maybe they just disappeared and they're somewhere, who knows where they're at. They could be in Kingdom of Mystica. Don't and, want to miss try to, yeah. and to try and go track them down would be that very resource that. intensive. You don't really have the money to like fund no. something like that yourself. So you know you got to aim small. So you look at the lower row, and there's all these papers, and you're, you're shuffling through them, on, tapped onto this board, and you're reading them. And there's a voice that um, seemingly comes out of nowhere as you go to grab a card off this board, and you hear this voice say, No, not that one. You just set your sights on someone higher. <laughs> and you look over completely startled and you see this man who um pulls his cloak his hood off like this and he's dressed all in completely like in black uh, a lot of his clothes have these like ornate looking silverish buckles on them 
over all his clothes, and he's in his middle 20s. He has a slender form, um, and he has short-kept black hair, uh, but a very handsome-looking face with angled cheekbones. And Okay. And... You know, you're a bit startled as he says, no, not that one. You should set, set your sights on someone higher. Okay. Do I recognize who it is at all, or is this just someone? You don't, you don't know who No is. idea. No. Nope. You're a little turned on, though. Admit it. Yeah, you're a little turned on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't swing that way. So he says, uh, my mistake, but have I met you before? Well, I've met you, but I don't think you would recall meeting me. Yes, and he says, must... allow me to introduce myself. My name is Pavel. Pavel. Hmm. He says, and he's scratching his chin real quick, and he says, I must... it's unfortunate, it must be tomorrow's bad luck that I can't remember you. But he says, I am Kalshin. And he says, I am relatively new to this guild. And he says, um, so he says, this one's no good, huh? And he says, well, I do strive for the best of fame and possibly to get it quick if I can. He says, what would you, what would you recommend? He says, well, first, you do not remember me because I chose for you not to remember me. And then, he, he, you know, as he's <laughs> apparently what? very <laughs> confident this savage. And, and he says... Hmm, I'm thinking perhaps maybe him. And he points towards the middle of the board. And Oops. you look at this guy, and there's this, uh, like this depiction of a bald-headed man with like this light kind of springing forth from his left eye. Uh, and he says, uh, as he points to it, he says, what do you think about this one? Well, what, 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 what? Yeah, else you're, you you're kind of a loss for words as you're looking for it, and you're just like thinking, like, uh, that's like, what the like heck? No way. Like, how would I even know where this guy is, right? Right. <laughs> so, so that's just what he is. He's just like, what are you talking about? Like, no way. And like, you look at, you then look as he moves his finger off, you see that the reward for this guy on the board is 200 gold. Oh shit! Holy crap! Pretty Is there good. any more detail about it? Um, yeah, you have a name, and you you look closer, and you see that this man's name is Daily Silver Eye. Daily Silver Eye. Yeah. Has he heard and, that before? And well, you remember seeing this on the board before. Uh, no one's been able to really find him. Daily Silver Eye. And the reward has gone up because it's been. Too long. Uh, no one's been able to find where he is. So he says, uh, "This poster's been on the board since, like, I since I've gotten my last dude." And he says, "What makes you think a novice like me could find him?" He says, "Ah, because alone, per perhaps you cannot do it, but you would have help." He says, "I have information on this one. I know where he is." And he just kind of looks at this sly little devil, and he says, And why would you help me? Kind sir. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> and, he and he says, Well, because you don't know it yet, but you see, you are going to help me. And he just says, hmm. It's a bit presumptuous for somebody you just met. And then he's like, oh, Excuse me, I guess for somebody I just met. And he says, perhaps we can make a trade. Mm. Okay, and he says, I'm listening. And he says, I know someone who is just dying to become a member of the Azure Brotherhood. And he says, I would like you to take this person under your wing, uh, to vouch for this person. And, uh, of course, against this fellow here, and he taps his finger on Daily Silver Eye's picture, mm -hmm. and says, it would be a good mentorship opportunity for you. Show this person the ropes, so to speak. And when you achieve this mission, 
uh, you definitely reap the rewards, but not only that, but the fame of being the one to bring in daily silver eye. And at that, and as soon as you say the fame, he can just envision it now. Oh, the yeah. money, the women, the power. And the, peep, the people in the Azure Brotherhood learning that the amateur novice Got this son of a bitch brought in daily yes. silver eye. And Heck you're thinking, yeah. wow, their mouths are just going to drop open in surprise. He's just, he's <laughs> kind of lost in thought right now. He's just kind of imagining. And he says, he says, all right. He says, I'll do it. And he says, but as long as your person that you're talking about ain't fishy in any way, maybe killed a couple of people, he says, I won't put up with that. At least if they've got caught. And he just smiles and he says, Oh, I don't think you have to worry about anything like that. Uh, I am merely doing a favor for a friend. Uh, and he, he says, says, Very well, then I accept. And he says, uh, He says, Let Very well done. be renowned through all of Timria. And he says that and he just looks at the poster and he just can't wait. And Pavel looks at you with a sly smile, and he says, Indeed, Kalshin the Great. And, <laughs> you know, playing off of your fantasy right. here. Right, playing off of the being renowned yeah. and everything. I'm a little worried and about And he says, <laughs> and he says, Tonight, go to the cracked keg in and tavern and wear this. And the person I am speaking of will approach you. And you look in his hand, and you actually notice he's wearing these black gloves, and he pulls out, and in his, the palm of his hand is you see the silver pin, a pin that you can easily clasp onto, like a cloak or, you know, some vestment, um, and it has a silver coin. Uh, it, it's like the picture of, like, a silver coin, but it's just a pin. Um, you know, it's not too valuable, but it's more of, like, an ins insignia or a marker of some kind. Uh, but he hands that to you, and he tells you to wear it. And All to right. go to the Cracked Keg in Tavern tonight. The Cracked Keg? Cracked Keg. Oh, Cracked in... Keg. Okay, yeah. got it. Yep. Uh, cracked with a K. Right. Cracked oh, okay, keg. with a K. Yep. Cracked Keg that? in right. Tavern. Like the crack of your ass. And he says, Well, my friend Kalshin, it seems today is the first day of the rest of your life as being famous. And he says, yes, very well then. I cannot wait. And yeah. uh, with He's that, he, he pulls up his hood and he gracefully just like, you're, you're amazed at the speed that he did this with, but just without a sound, like he just gracefully and just moves off it, through the dark doorway. And before, he, before he actually goes out, he wants to, he wants to say something. He's going to say, by the way, can I, what was your name again? No. How can I think of this if I do not even know their name? This clearly has something to do with the story, Casey. Shut up. <laughs> well, he already said his name once. I'm just wondering if... Uh... I completely forgot about it. I was <laughs> trying to type it all down. <laughs> oh, shit. And you see him leave uh, around the corner, and you're like, dang it, I, I can't remember his name. And you march off around the corner, and you just see just an empty corridor. Damn it! And you don't see anything, and you're looking all around. You don't see him anywhere. His name started with a C, I'm pretty sure. Well, he has an intelligence <laughs> of A, so even, if I can't remember it, there's no way in hell he's, he can remember it. Well, so. let's see if it comes to you. I'll let you roll an intelligence check. Let me roll an intel? All right. Yeah. Get rid of your bad rolls you right now. Lucky. Yeah, we'll let the dice just... tell the story here. <laughs> well, you gotta roll. <laughs> you gotta all roll right. 20, though. We'll see oh, if you dude. can recall. So bad. Come on, come on, come on. Roll a 20. Oh. It's on the it's on the tip of your tongue. You just can't quite remember. You're thinking maybe it was like Davin or something or Levin or Davin or somebody. We'll go with that. Right on. Yeah, you you just I'm like dang it. Why can't I remember his name? But you just kind of shrug it off. Like, well, at least I have this pen and I remember the yep. cracked keg and in tavern. Cracked okay. keg and in tavern. Heck yeah. Okay. So now, we, uh, you walk over to this finder's board, and you smile to yourself as you pick off the card in the, port the picture 
of uh, daily silver eye. Okay. And yeah, and you you take the picture with you, and uh, Heck yeah, you, know, you you just smile at I'm yourself, you're like it. oh yeah, this guy's my hell mom. yeah, it's happening, yeah. man. And so uh, well, awesome. we even lose sight of you as you walk around the corner down that corridor, and um, we hear your fading footsteps as you go off into the city. Heck yeah. Okay, now Ash. Yeah. So. Ash, earlier in the day, um, you got word that, um, well, I guess I'll just say it. <laughs> Calvin. <laughs> no, one of your contacts <laughs> wanted to speak with you and wanted to meet you at the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern. And you don't know why, but definitely the tone. He, he gave a little symbol. Uh, like some sketches in this parchment and the symbols mm -hmm. you recognize is kind of like to mean like this is important like this is urgent like don't skip out on this like this is very highly important and to the casual reader they would totally miss what those symbols would even mean and with their arrangement but you recall that and you look at that and you're like what the what the heck does he want you know and you know who this guy is um Yep, so he kind of gives a time frame, but um, you realize the time is quickly approaching and it's evening, it's early evening, and you need to start making your way to the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern, which is like, you know, this is a vast sprawling city, so you realize you have to, you know, it's probably going to take you like an hour just to get over on that side just by foot. You know, you are a halfling after all. Mm -hmm. Um so you leave a bit early so you can make your way there. Now, uh, you get to the streets, you know, you, you're like in this completely different district of where you normally uh, spend a lot of your time. But you're in this other district, and you're then thinking, oh, where is that cracked keg in a tavern? Oh, yes, I believe it's down that street. And you're like, oh, mm -hmm. if I just walk down this alleyway, I think I can get it, take a shortcut. So you go down this gloomy looking hallway, but of course you're not so concerned about such things unless you want to be. Okay. Pretty used to it. Yep. You're pretty used to it. So Ash, you uh quickly make way into the shadows of this alleyway as evening has already set in and there's these deep shadows. And then you hear a voice call out and say, Ash, over here, over here. It's me. And you recognize the voice immediately, and it's uh, it's your contact. Well, that is it now, Pablo. Yep. And he, uh, as you walk over to him, he like kind of walks around you to interpose. Mm -hmm. uh, you realize what he's doing, of course, because you being a halfling and all. He's kind of blocking anyone who would be walking by anyone from being able to see you. And that kind of marks you a little bit odd. Like, why is he doing that? You know, why is he shielding me? Because, you know, with your ability, that's how it works, is you use, you can use a man-sized target or above to, like, kind of shield you, and you can actually hide um, and yeah. make it so people can't see you. So he's standing there, kind of interposing himself as, like, a barrier so that people walking by can't see you. So um, he says, you know, and you know, you're hearing laughter in the distance and bursts of shouting and stuff as the city has definitely come alive this early evening. And he says, "So, do you remember Keyleth von Spien?" <laughs> and you're like thinking and racking your brain. You're just like, "Yeah, Keyleth von Spien. Oh, yes, that's right." Now, Keyleth von Spien is a tiefling firewalker but definitely one of those who has quite a bit of money and is known to be an alchemist and likes to throw his money around and bribe officials. And that has never really sat well with you. Uh, it actually kind of pissed you off. And sure. as need be would have it, being a halfling, it kind of comes with its own challenges in the sense that when you deal with humans and other larger races, they kind of look at halflings as like little children. 
uh, they think they're just kind of cute and they, they can't be any harm. The, you know, they're of no consequence, basically. Um, it's easy for these type of people to just overlook a halfling because they're just so small. How deadly could they possibly be? Or how important can they possibly be? You know, because they're so small. Well, you're, you're used to that. And that belief is, uh, you know, it made it really easy for you to be able to sneak into his laboratory at some sort of party that he was throwing. And you stole one of his secret alchemical formulas and you sold it off for some good cash. Sure. Uh, does that nice. does that fit Ash, what she would do? Yep. Okay, perfect. Fuck yeah. Um, and you're just kind of like, yeah, this is what you get, you know? Well, mm -hmm. Pavin and says, well, it seems that Keyleth has, has your description. He knows that you are the one that stole his secret formula. Says, well, at least not your name, but he definitely has your description. How he got that description, I don't know. But you know Keyleth von Spien. Uh, he has quite a few followers and loyal supporters of him. And he says, I think it would be well for you to lie low for a while. He says, I got to be honest, Ash. I like you. He says, uh, you have made the both of us quite a good sum of money. You're about the only person I can tolerate. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, he says, I do have a proposition for you, though. No doubt you don't hole up in some burrow for a while. Hey, we like doing that. <laughs> And he says, um, I have made arrangements for you to join up with the Azure Brotherhood. Uh, this could be a cover and for protection. And he says, um, Ash, as you know, being a member of the Azure Brotherhood means that you will be able to flaunt that symbol and people won't be <clears throat> asking too many questions as they will assume that you are a bounty hunter going about your business of the guild. He says, this could be a good cover for you. And you need to make some friends, sorry to say. I know that you prefer to be freelance and solo, but uh, I think it's probably in your best interest to have more friends other than me. And he gives you a sly smile as he says that. Making some money as a bounty hunter would have hurt either. He says, ah, so you are interested. Well, of course. He says, oh, well, that pleases me. He says, uh, in case my message to you was intercepted, I decided to meet you before you got to the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern. And he says, I am not sure how far Keyleth's hands uh, extend. And, you know, you, know he, you definitely know that he's kind of a shady character, but you've come to really appreciate Pavel. Um, and the things that he's done for you and stuff like that. And you, you're yeah. kind of maybe feeling really grateful that like, holy crap, Pavel totally has my back here. Like this actually makes me feel good that I can trust him because yeah. Keyleth von Spien to be a target of him is definitely kind of scary because he yeah, is a is. firewalker. So he's an archon of Kazuth. Uh, oh. def yeah. yeah you, you, that's pretty scary. And plus he is an alchemist and, uh, you saw his lab and his equipment. Like he definitely has a lot of money, a lot of resources. And if he's looking for you, yeah, That's it makes a lot of sense to maybe <laughs> hook up with some people, make Why some friends. Why did you steal? Lay low for a while. <laughs> but yeah. you also you also can't help but have a grin on your face as you recall that mission of uh, stealing the pages out of his tome of this formula of this concoction he was making, and uh, sold it to anyways, viral too. That was the best part. Yeah. <laughs> yep. And um, so, yeah. So you say that you're interested. And he says, go ahead on, continue on to the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern. There, you will see a man wearing my pen. Uh, he has agreed to be your mentor in the Azure Brotherhood. Okay. And he says, uh, I didn't tell him, uh, I must admit, I kind of left out some minor details. Um, he, I just referred to you as a person. And uh, 
you instantly, you know, are on the same page regarding to what he's referring to. <laughs> and, uh, you know, yeah. it's probably going to be funny on this man when he sees you. But. <laughs> <laughs> what? Who's touching me? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 I'm baffling. <laughs> <laughs> so, and he says, ah, and one more thing. Uh, as part of the agreement I made with this man to pr procure your entrance into, this, uh, into the Brotherhood, uh, you will find this handy. And he hands you a little piece of paper, like a, a parchment, a note. And now I'm going to uh, give you access to this. So, all right. Do you see that in your journal? Yeah. Pavel's note. So you mm -hmm. go ahead and give it a quick read. Oh. Okay. <laughs> so, all righty. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> so you continue on. Um, and you enter into the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern. Now, you've been here, uh, Cal Sheen, you made it to the Cracked Keg Inn and Tavern, and you're mm -hmm. sitting at this table, and you're just hearing the music play, and there's, the whole crowd is into it as uh, someone requested from the bard up at the hearth playing this upbeat tempo song um, as he's playing on this, uh, this lute. You know, just kind of, <laughs> just jamming right <laughs> for lack of a better yeah. term like he's sitting there just strumming like crazy and his Hell fingers yeah. are blurry he's going that's awesome uh you know you you've just been enjoying the culture you maybe enjoying a mug of ale um mm -hmm. you know a little drink <laughs> and just waiting for someone every person that enters into the inn and tavern you you purposely sat at a table where you can keep your eye on the entrance I'd imagine that's right. probably what you would try to do because, you know, you don't want to be too surprised. You, you kind of want to see every person that comes in because you're, like, right. anticipating this. And that way they can see my pin as week. well pretty clearly. Exactly. And you, you have yeah. your, the pin, like, just up here so it could be clearly seen. And just pop it up person, a bit. person after person uh, just comes through and you're just, like, you see that they look at you, but then they don't really notice anything or they're not right. looking for anything, and yeah. then they go about their business, and you're just kind of like, dang it. So you've been here long enough and enjoyed enough, and you kind of, your mind starts to wander, and you're, you know, you're just looking at this bar just completely play like crazy and just getting into it, and the whole crowd is cheering. And Ash, as you walk in, the crowd is going crazy. And you look around, and you see this man wearing Pavel's pin. Now, what, what does Kalshin look like here? Um, <clears throat> so Kalshin, he's, uh, he's about average, average height. He's uh, five foot nine. Yeah, grayish blue eyes, white skin, minor tan, mostly white. He's got uh, some long black hair, not like too long, but about shoulder height, you know. Um, and he's super young. So he's definitely not even in his 20s. Or, well, that's right. You're 18, right? You're 18, 18 years old. So, yeah, that's pretty much what he looks like. Oh, and he wears mostly black type silver clothing. You know, he has got some, like, maybe some silver fur hanging off of him. Just because, you know, part of the colors of being a clergy member of Lady Tamora. That's just some colors he likes. So Yep. Yep. Heck yeah. Okay. So... <sighs> Uh, Ash, you walk in and you see this man uh, wearing Pavel's pen, and he's not really paying attention to you, um, although most people don't pay attention to you when you walk into an inn. Yeah. And, <laughs> and you walk in and you make your way towards um, Kalshin. What, what do you say as you approach? Or what do you do? Uh, he doesn't notice you. He's completely lost in the... Uh, he's getting into it, man. He's not what's oh, going on. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. people are clapping like, <laughs> Hell like yeah. you, know? you got a board waiting for you, man. <laughs> yeah. So um, what do you what do you do? Guess I'll uh, 
Walk throw a dagger. No, I'm just kidding. The... Oh, I'm <laughs> just kidding. Yeah. <laughs> you tug on his fucking cloak. Yet. <laughs> hey. <laughs> yeah. Suddenly, suddenly oh, you know, a whip wrap around your neck. So, what, what do you do? Do you stand on a chair next to him, or? No, I just go up to him, like pull on his pant leg. Okay, you you feel a tug at your pants there, Kelsey. I just kind of shake it off with my foot, and I'm just still getting into it. I'm just still with the music, man. I just kind of wiggle my oh, leg a goodness. bit, like. You look down, and you see a Chucky dog. <laughs> Stab him in the leg. <laughs> That's the only choice. Do you the only play? choice you have now. You could bite his leg. That would be hilarious. Take your arrow and shoot him in the leg. <laughs> oh, man. I feel like that would be going a little too far. That's, uh, that's yeah. You shrugged so him he, off, bro. He, he, he's not really like he seems just too involved in this, and he's you know you tug on his pants, and he's just not noticing. Um, you call up Adam. Um, yeah, I'll I'll do try to give that a shot first. You say his name? Does I don't think I know. No. Oh, no, he, he never. Pavel, you don't know. Pavel didn't tell him. So what do you just say? Like, hey, <laughs> yo, dog, yo, dog. <laughs> and I guess he's just kind of like looking so, around. Like, did somebody say something? Like, yeah, you <laughs> see him looking around. Is he? He thinks yeah. he heard a voice. You're You're like, like, but then, <laughs> you know, you probably do look down at this point, just because. Then you're like, wait, I felt something Someone tug, at tug me down on my leg. My leg. Then, yeah. So you look down, and to your surprise, you see this halfling girl, and instantly inside you're thinking, oh, by tomorrow's luck, please no. (laughs) (laughs) Hey, little girl, are you lost? (laughs) See, are you lost? Nice. That's what he would say. (laughs) Okay. Yeah. What what is that? So you say that, and... You instantly kind of like you get this dark glare, which is a little surprising from a halfling. But you notice like she's got these kind of piercing blue eyes, and they're they're, they're kind of a mix between just disappointment and uh, frustration at you. And I probably recognize that maybe it's I probably will look at you and realize you're probably a halfling, especially if you're wearing any like armor or something like that. Because no child's going to be wearing like suited up with stuff, so... Are you wearing anything like that? What are you wearing? What, what does Kelsheen see? Yeah, so... She's, Ash has got like, uh, studded leather that's mm-hmm. black and gray and brown. Um, she's got, like, a, a cloak and... Pr- looks pretty well uh, armed, too, so... <laughs> you see a hand crossbow, you see a whip, you see a, a light crossbow and a Short bow, like wow, kind of armed to the teeth. Ooh, a, you have a light crossbow too. Ooh. Yeah. Okay. Oh, so yeah, so for you uh, being only like two foot something, yeah, that's. Yeah, the light crossbow is kind of like a. That's my two handed. <laughs> <Yeah, they're laughs> pretty much. And after yeah. you give him that glare and stuff, he kind of is taken aback a, a back a bit, and he kind of looks at you a little further, and he says. Oh, and he says this in Halfling. He says, ah, oh, my mistake. I thought you were a small child. And he says, are you the person? And he kind of, like, flaunts his little pen, like... <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. I nod and say, yes, I am the person that Pavel talked about, apparently. Ah, Here's this the, is uh, Fantastic. He says, I've been waiting for you for... What's up? I said, you're the contact, then. Uh, and he says, I believe I am. And he says, when do I have some big things to tell you? And he says, and then he kind of pauses. He's like, not to be rude. But, yeah, you know. I was about to say, I got some big things to tell you, little one. <laughs> A lot of things are big when you're my size. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no shit. He says, uh, perhaps after this song, we should uh, have a seat and talk some things over. Perhaps we should find a shadowy corner and do it now. And he says, he's looking at the song, or he's hearing the song, and he's like, 
All right, fine. And he says, let's go. Oh. And so, I guess we'll uh, go outside and we'll find an alley, or? Yeah, actually, this inn has brought in, because of the clamor of the crowd, and this bard just going crazy jamming on his loot, has brought in quite the crowd. The barmaids are frantically trying to keep up with drinks, but there is not a vacant place in this in the tavern. No, like, no, oh. It is packed with people. There are no empty corners. Um, yeah, as you now look around and notice, like there's oh, twice as man. many people there than there was like ten minutes ago. Actually, he's going to persuade. Actually, he wants to try to persuade this little halfling to stay for one more song. Well, ask her. Yeah, he already he already did. So he says. So he'll he'll say it again. He'll just say, "I re he says I implore you, just listen to this." And he says, "Perhaps if you stand on my shoulders, you'll get a better view, and maybe you'll get into it." And he says, Persuasion. "I can imagine it's probably quite hard, difficult to hear down there." Persuasion check. And he <laughs> and he says You're this in a fucking asshole, view. dude. <laughs> No, no persuasion check. This is against another player character. So yeah. Mike he's trying to be. Fine. He's trying to be nice. He's not actually yeah. trying to be a douche. Yeah, I can hear just fine. I just he, uh, yeah. I don't. I don't find this particularly unusual or all that entertaining. And he says, "Ah, oh, very well then." He says, "Maybe we should find a different place to talk things over." Yeah, you can tell she she could care less. But you're kind of like thinking, man, I've never heard anyone play a lute like that. That was Kid amazing. Is, man. Yeah. And uh, the, the, the song is just like, there's just this roar. You guys can't even hear each other speak because there's just this roar. Oh, of okay. And people are like chanting for like, more, more, more. And <laughs> the bard raises up a hand and he, you know, he's doing this with his hands and people start tossing coins out at him. Cling, 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 as coins come flying in. Hell yes. The bard, the bard then uh, begins to play. <sighs> and he just, and Kaoshin just gives a renounced sigh, and he's just like, and he just kind of hand gestures towards the door, as in very well. Yeah. Okay. And you guys leave the yeah. roaring crowd behind, and like, it's just as soon as you get out of the building, like, you can hear so much better. Um, so yeah, there, nearby there's some barrels and stuff outside. Uh, mm. You know, some waste uh, from patrons' drinks, like, right. you know, not all the way drunk or drink. yeah, um, undrunk drinks. So, so there's some up. waste barrels there of uh, <laughs> yeah, and so you know you go around near the corner of the inn and tavern where these barrels are, and. Uh, yeah, you can even like sit up on them if you want or whatever. But sure. if you want, so, you can talk right there. Yeah, we'll just go in there and uh, I don't know. She may want to sit on there to get my height. I don't know. I'm gonna stand. Yeah, I'll do a triple somersault. Triples. <laughs> Jump off the, the uh, double car wheel jump. <laughs> You, do you want to do an stick acrobatics the like maneuver and stick the landing? Sure, I'll do it. Okay, so not <laughs> terribly difficult for you. Um, we'll do D12. Oh, oh, oh there's a good one. You did this so perfectly. <laughs> you <laughs> couldn't have done it any better. So, so you kind of want to impress your soon-to-be mentor in the Brotherhood, and you're kind of you kind of want to right now <clears throat> lay the the foundation and the framework here of the fact that you're not some little child and some girl, like that's going to irritate you very quickly or get old quickly. If he keeps on talking to you like that, like talking down to you. So you just right. spring up in these somersaults and you do these flips and you're astounded as you see her. She's just a blur of motion as she leaves the front steps of the inn and she somersaults and then does these two double flips through the air, and then she lands on her feet in a slight crouch on top of one of the barrels. And he just looks, and he says, wow, well done. And he says, I see you uh, I have a lot to take in as being your mentor. 
He says, I will not take you light so lightly as a... Uh, any one of those arrows in my back with you being so nimble as you are and he says uh very well at, um let's get down to business and he says who are you <laughs> i uh i appreciate the sentiment that will help our relationship progress a lot better mm -hmm. my my name is well you can call me ash Everybody I know pretty much just calls me Ash. Ash. He says, what a beautiful name for someone as young as yourself. And he says, and what brings you into the occupation of the Azure Brotherhood? Well, it seems like a rather good, uh, lucrative experience and something that can get me out of the city. Yeah. Just lucrative, lucrative money and stuff? For the most part. You said, I, damn it, you broke up there for me. Well, I said, for the most part. I heard lucrative and then it died. Yeah, your portrait just uh, froze on me here, CJ. Yeah, everyone's kind of frozen for me. Oh, there you go. It's bad. Is it better? Oh, okay, cool. Yeah, yeah so I heard bad. lucrative and that was like it. I don't remember what I said anymore. Yeah, he, he's, yeah he said it, it seems like a lucrative uh, way of life. Um, or, you know, something like that. So you're instantly thinking in yeah. Kalshin, you're probably thinking back to that finder's board at those notes of people higher up worth more with the greatest bounty. Mm -hmm. You're just thinking, oh, yeah, if her and I work together, maybe we could travel. Oh, no, no, that's what he's just about up. to get to. Uh -huh. Okay. Yep. yep. Yep, and he says, well... Being your mentor, I have a job for the both that will put us into great ranks within our own guild. And he says, and I believe you are perfect for the job, being as agile as you are. And he says, we are going after this guy, and he's going to pull out the portrait. So as you're, you're pulling the paper out of your pocket, I say, Daily Silver Eye, yeah. <laughs> and he says, how did you know that? We have a mutual friend, remember? Ah, yes, that guy. And he says, I can't seem to remember his name. And um, he's just kind of like lingering it out there. He goes by Pavel most of the time. Speaking Pavel. of names, what is, uh, what is your name? What do you go by? Ah, and he says, hear this and hear it well, for it will be all around Temria before you know it. And he says, I am Kalshi Niviarte. And he says, I will be soon to be the most famous person in this place. Well, you've got a lot of competition. Like <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah, definitely, Ash. Uh, you know, a lot of people come to Timria dreaming of riches and also fame and, you know, be renowned for winning competitions and stuff. Uh, you know, that that's not right. unusual. So, yeah, totally accurate when you say, like, well, yeah, that's great. That there's a lot of competition there. <laughs> a lot of competition. Yeah, totally right on the head there. Uh, and he says, "Ah, but I am different." And he says, "Ever since I was just a uh, in my teens, Lady Tamor has always been watching over me." And he kind of stops and he says, "I could tell you a few tales, but maybe perhaps another time." And yeah. uh, he just kind of lets it off at that, and he says, "So." About this, uh, what was his face? Crap, I need to type it down. What was his name? Something Silver Eye. Something Silver Eye? Is that, Daily. Is that who you're talking about? Daily? Daily Silver Eye? So he says, back to uh, Daily Silver Eye. He says, uh, what much do you know about him and where he is at? I know quite a bit. Perhaps um, we can get down to details, and when we've got a more secure location, perhaps at your what? What does that? Your brother had have any idea of a kill call, a meeting spot? A no, you must be referring to the Azure. Yeah, you must be referring to the Azure Brotherhood. 
He says, uh, no need to be shy. You can call it for what it is. After all, you are a part of it now, or soon will be. He says, um, perhaps going there right now would not be the best, as you probably would need to prove yourself somehow. And he says, however, that is what this daily Silver Eye mission is about. He says, perhaps we should go to a inn and maybe talk some things over on how to approach this before we introduce you to the Brotherhood itself. Uh, all right, if that's what uh, we need to do, that sounds good. Yeah, so kind of what you're getting out there to uh, Kalshin, which makes sense. So this is kind of like, uh, you know, if you could bring this daily silver guy in, note that when you go out on these bounties, uh, definitely Kalshin, I don't know if this would be obvious to Ash or not, but the intent is to bring these people in alive. Right. If they're dead, no one's collecting anything off of them. They can't yeah. go and try to, you know, find their reserves of money. Like, for sure, you know, the, the whole like, yeah, that's the whole point. They need to be alive to pay. They need yeah. to be alive so that they can pay. Yes. Uh, whether yeah. they have to do service in the dungeons or you know who right. knows what it is, mm -hmm. they need to be alive. So, um, definitely, you think that if together you guys can bring in this daily silver eye together, that's going to guarantee. One, you vouching for her that she's capable of being uh, a member, but also that's like her her trial run. Like, right? You know, she would have proven prove herself, herself right. capable, and that would mm -hmm. get her into the the membership. Oh yeah. But you're kind for of sure. like thinking, yeah, like what she just did, like double flipping up. Oh yeah. The barrel, like mm -hmm. almost as amazing as seeing that bar just jam on that. Oh, yeah. It's definitely a huge morale boost when coming to deal with somebody like Daily Silver Eye for him. So, yeah, Heck yeah, so, yeah, yeah. So, um, at this point, you guys have been talking for a little bit here, and the, you see a lot of people starting to disperse from within the inn. And uh, either the bard is done, or you know, maybe time for the next performer, or maybe he's taking a break. Either way. Some people, it seems like, have lost interest and they want to go see what else there is to see in the city. So there's quite a few people who start funneling out of the cracked keg in in tavern. Wow. So you guys could go back in there if you want. Yeah. Uh, well, didn't she just... Oh, okay, no, no, never mind. I was thinking of something else. Yeah, we can go back in. We can... Uh... Check on the rooms. So that's what Kalshin's going to go do, is see if there's any rooms available. Um, you probably don't need to get a room here. Um, you've been living in Luxhold, like both of you. So I imagine, I mean, I guess we didn't talk about that, but... Uh, yeah. Well, you're a cleric, actually. So have you been doing training at... The temple of tomorrow too. Maybe you have a room there. I, I guess I don't know if we're allowed to invite people like that into quarters. Are we allowed to do that? Like who are non-clergy into like our own quarters? Um, I honestly don't know. A, I'm, I'm question. just asking. Well, <clears throat> they could only care if they actually see her, right? <laughs> Oh. Yeah, right. Yeah. I don't know. Um, I actually don't know. I haven't really thought about that. But, I mean, um, just yeah, for the sake like, of the moment. Yeah, they probably wouldn't care if it was like maybe for a, a night or for a short stint, but if it was like meant to be permanent residence, right. they probably would not be okay with that. Sure. He says, well, let us, uh, I have a place where it could be much safer than this inn. And he says, uh, let us head there. And he's going to lead her to the nearest temple, I would suppose. Okay. Or guess, yeah. Hmm. Okay. Okay. All right. So um, you guys walk a good 40 minutes to the temple. Jeez. It's and on your little legs. You could have just walked into the bar, Casey. All right. <laughs> Well, he, he wants to do it in seclusion. So, I don't know, Ash, do, do you want to go to the... Well, he's suggesting to go to his uh, living space at the Temple of Tamora. Is that okay with you, or do you just think that's probably too far? It's like a 40-minute walk to get there. 
That's a long fucking walk, He's, man. Uh, this guy's my in with the guild, so like whatever. Yeah. Okay. So yeah, you follow him, and uh, you guys make it eventually to your living quarters at the temple. All right. And uh, there are some guards up front, of course, and they greet you and they say, "Ah, Kalshin." <clears throat> Ah, welcome back. And uh, who is your friend? Ah, she is my subordinate, as I am her mentor in the Azur Brotherhood Guild. Already? But uh, didn't you just join recently? Ah, that I did. But before you guys know it, I'm going to be taking on big jobs, and you're going to be knowing me all throughout this place. And he says... She is uh, an extension, I guess you could say, of my own fame that I will be gaining. And he eyes down and looks at uh, Ash. And he looks back at you, Kalshin, just says, well, whatever you say. And then he... <laughs> you know, uh, and with that, he says, you know, fortune favors the bold, and he gives a nod. And then he just says, Tamora be with thee. Heck yeah. And, she, and he motions, you know, he kind of steps and turns, basically indicating that it's okay for you to just advance and continue in. So <laughs> you both continue in, and, you know, this place is Let's free. Give, like, a nod. <sighs> okay. And um, he just looks at you and, uh, like, the whole way. You, you know, he, his, he's just staring at you, Ash. Um, as you follow Kalshin through the entryway of this temple, and this whole temple, and when just, we're and when we're like around, probably like forty feet away from the guards, he's gonna say, uh, "As you can see, I am already quite renowned in this place." He says, as those <laughs> oh my God. "Guards already knew who I was." <laughs> yeah, and he just kind of keeps on walking, with his head held high. I can't wait for getting to meet you. <laughs> oh man so Heck yeah. that's great <laughs> alright right so on. right away Ash like you're just like you've never been in the temple of tomorrow before you never really had a reason to um, yeah. but wow like this place definitely from the descriptions and things you've heard like they have spared no expense like what you would expect, you know, of like probably one of the richest kingdoms yeah. around. Uh, the, this temple, and there's actually more than one temple in Luxhold. Um, there's three temples total in Luxhold. And, you know, this is just one of them, but all of them are just completely ornate and elaborate. Uh, just very rich, expensive stuff everywhere. Um, gems, from gemstones to... Uh, gold and silver and platinum lined ornate objects uh you know or trimmings um it's just very immaculate um at least the entryway is once you get into the corridors where the living quarters are of course it's not so elaborate um it's more of definitely meant as a like to impress initially like visitors people who come in have audience with maybe some luck masters um <clears throat> So I believe it's Luck Masters is what the Archons of Tamora are called. I've never created the Arc the Luck Masters yet. That was one of my to dos yet, but it doesn't matter because none of you guys are playing one. But right. remember, there are Archons of Tamora who are definitely kind of that extra step above a cleric. Like they're oh, way more okay. devout. Oh, yeah. Um, I thought that's what a Fate Lord was. That's a different thing. No, yeah, Fate Lord is different. Oh, uh, Fate Lord is no. nickname okay. for uh, the Purple Dragon Knight from the Sword Coast Adventure Guide. Uh, uh, so their the class mechanics are exactly the same as Purple Dragon Knight, but instead of Purple Dragon Knight, which kind of fits uh, Cormer in Forgotten Realms, yeah, are, are the, uh, been... what's that? Are the Archons called Luckbringers? Yeah, luck bringers. Okay. That's right. Luck bringer. So yeah, those are the archons of Tamora, but not implemented yet. <clears throat> okay, nice. so but yeah, a fate lord is, is also called a uh, Timric knight. Uh, by the a, way, abroad. so they're they're the same thing. Um, it's just that fate lord is more of the local slang of a Timric knight that Timrians often use. 
people okay. in Mystica tend to just use the the more formal term of a Timric knight. Right. Um, but yeah, right. but same class. But to be a Fate Lord, it's you know you're like a warrior, but it's like you have this special relationship with Tamora where she blesses you and you know she has favor upon you specifically. Heck yeah. So, and that kind of explains some of the abilities too, like because you're you know doing second wind on your allies and actually you know oh, you're yeah. bestowing this luck upon your and allies. My luck, yeah. yes, the luck. So, anyways, um, so you get to your living quarters, um, Kalshin, and you know you pull out a key. So you might want to put this down too, since we've established this. You have a key to your living quarters uh, at the temple. Or at a temple of Tamora. Yeah, and you enter in. Sense. You unlock it and you enter. And there are these soft lights just down the corridor that were just constantly glowing, this faint, like faintly dimming and pulsating <laughs> light that is just kind of giving this magical like feel through the corridors uh, with all the living quarters, but it's like completely mm -hmm. lit up. And yeah, you guys walk into your quarters and you close the door. Heck yeah. Okay. And yeah. uh he beckons her to take a seat wherever she wants. Jump up and pop down to the shortest seat in the place. We'll say fancy digs. <laughs> <laughs> Heck yeah. All right. Well, he says, uh, well, we missed a pretty big performance. I hope you got some good information on this guy. Well, I know where he lives, and I know his, what guards he has, and I know that they're dumb. <laughs> <I know>. oh. <laughs> and he just kind of gives a laugh at that last read. Then he says, fantastic. And he says, I take it you have never done a bounty job before in your life, have you? Mm, it's slightly different work than what I'm used to, that's true. <laughs> and he says, rule number one. And he says this, and like, as he kind of stands up and he bolsters a bit, and he says, we must take our target alive. And he says, no killing. And he says, for it is important that the only way to get our bounty, which in this case is 200 gold, is he has to be alive to pay it somehow. And he says, that is Tamora's divine justice. Oh, well, that makes it a little trickier. And he says, I, it might. And he says, uh, I've always avoided the middle row where uh, people like uh, Daily Silver Ice sat. And he says, so I honestly don't know how tough he's going to be. So any information will do. Might want to uh, pick up some manacles then if we're going to have to drag him somewhere. <laughs> hey, we've got a uh, we got well, hemp and we got hemp and rope. <laughs> he says, or we could almost kill. Where'd him. that voice come from? <laughs> yeah, where'd that voice come from? <laughs> <laughs> I, I kind of feel like you know maybe we should get some more right. people. Maybe an yeah, right. maybe a baby. He says, <laughs> he says, I do. He says, I yeah. He says, I do happen to have some rope here. And he says, but if there is a chance where things are going south, we could kill him, or almost kill him, I should say, for I am a cleric after all. I'll heal his wounds later, and we can claim their rewards and call it good. Oh, fair enough. Mm. No, no, Ash, she uh, perks up a little bit when you say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Ash, uh, right on. Do you show him Pavel's note? Or do you keep it to yourself? Oh, I, I guess I haven't thought about it. I just, just tell him. So far, I just told him stuff. Well, I mean, you kind of, you pretty much told him the meat of the note, but do you, would you mind if I just read what the note says? Yeah, that's fine. I okay, mean, so, talk, talk so Kyle and Jeremy, just remember, talking. you guys don't know any of this information, okay? So it just occurred to me, you know, people might be curious about... Uh, <clears throat> what this note actually says. So Pavel's note that he handed to Ash just says, uh, this note contains the address of a home where Daily Silver Eye is hiding. There are some additional scribbles on the note which read, guards eight, one dog, two hour shifts, 
drink at night, idiots. Idiots. <laughs> <laughs> and Kalshin's looking at this and he says, I see this is very thorough. He says, especially that last part. He <laughs> says, and he says, have you seen this hideout before, Ash? Nope, you haven't. What was that? that you have never seen it. Oh, he asked if you've seen the hideout like yourself. Yeah. Oh, probably not. The city's pretty big. Mm. He says, hmm. He says, well, as detailed as this note is, we may still need to scout it out just to see where all the entrances are. That would be now, probably our first part. Now, Ash, from the address in this note, uh, and you're looking at the address as well, um, you know, if it was shared with you anyways, Kalshin, you definitely realize that the address of this hideout is kind of not a so good upscale area of the city. Uh, like oh. any city that's going to be, you know, based around gambling and greed, so to speak, there's going to be those who are less fortunate and those who maybe aren't so well off. There's going to be poor areas. And of course, those are going to be more kind of crime ridden. Um, and the address seems to be at a location in one such district where it's not so well off. So he rec I'm guessing he recognizes where this is at then. The probably, address. yeah, yeah, probably. Okay. Yeah. Hmm. And he says this might be a bit of a problem, however. But you do. I'm just going to throw this out there. You do probably think you know we could at least go and maybe scout it out and see, you know. Well. Yeah, am am I renowned in that area at all? Are you renowned? Yeah. Like, have I gotten no. renowned? You think you're renowned everywhere, but you're actually yeah. not. Okay. <laughs> so this is what he's going to say then. <laughs> so he's going to say, hmm. He says, if my reputation precedes me, he says, it might not be a good idea for me to wander there. Um to scout out this hideout as uh, someone could possibly strike out at me and foil this whole mission. He says, that wouldn't be very good. <clears throat> and then he kind of looks at you and he says, however, with your height, it might not be a problem. Oh, it's... it's and he no says... Problem. Or sorry, with your agility, it might not be a problem. He'll correct himself after he says that. Yeah, scouting, scouting places... Get in around places. That's pretty easy for me. And he says, ah, that is good news. And he says, well, then tomorrow let us set off, or you set off. Scout the place and then report back to me. And he says, and we will figure something out. As for materials, and he says, I will go see what we, I can do. Okay. So, uh, so you guys are going to head out? Um, what time of day is it right now? Evening. Should we do it right now, or should we do it the next day? Our shops close at this time. Oh wait, it's a city that never sleeps. Shops are never closed. Yep. Yeah, might as well do it now. Yeah, so, you're just you're gonna. So, what do you want to go get exactly? I don't know. He's just gonna go check out some stores, see if there's anything useful for a scouting mission. <laughs> well, I mean, like what? What are you looking for? Just anything that catches his eye. He's not, he doesn't really know. That's the whole thing. <clears throat> it's well, kind of almost like impulse shopping to see if there's anything he likes that could help him. You know what I mean? Well, I'm not going to tell you if that's what you're getting at. Like, if there's Casey, something that you could think well, of, let's try and go and buy that. it. Well, I think at some point, what? you two Some and binoculars. us two need to meet. No, I don't think you're going to find binoculars. Or not binoculars. Some sort of enhanced seeing. That, well, I don't know. Handcuffs. I don't know. That's what I'm saying. He's going to go to the shops to see if there's anything that could pertain to this mission that could be useful. So, so Ash, you're following this guy, and you're just kind of like, man, this guy's kind of full of himself. And uh, you get dragged to a couple different stores, and... And Ash, you realize that he's going there. He doesn't really have any idea what the heck he wants. It seems like he's just hoping to get lucky and to find something that would be useful to a scouting mission. But he doesn't really... He's not going to the store with any sense of purpose. 
<laughs> so I don't know. Maybe you just say, look, can we just let's just go scout it out. There's so many people in the city coming and going. Like they're not gonna notice. Yeah, trust me, and, people don't notice me. <laughs> yeah, and plus, you're pretty positive. You would almost bet your life on it that these people are not gonna recognize him. Like they're not gonna he's, notice him. He says you must not have been here that long to feel that way. But I will show you different. No, no, no. That's Fine. what he, that's what he's think. She's thinking. I'm just saying. Oh, all right. Okay. So you guys continue on to just together to go check it out, okay? Okay. Well, let's just go with that. You don't do want to wait till the next day. Yeah. Do, do you have a hood? Do you have a cloak or anything? There. Look at your fucking phone. <laughs> All right. Now we're gonna. That fades out. They're on their way to go scout out this house or this address. Now, Gil, uh, yeah, let's go to Gil. You have been wandering the streets for quite some time, and your feet are starting to hurt, and you decided to take a load off, and you walk into just a nearby inn and tavern. Oh, no, dude. And you get a drink, and you're just relaxing a bit and just thinking, man, what? you know, you're very carefully eyeing every single person that you can see because you're just hoping you can catch this tall, burly man with this thick black beard, specifically with these two different colored eyes, right? With the brown eye and the, the blue eye. Um, you know, someone like that definitely stands out. I mean, we, you've even heard, too, that uh, people born with different colored eyes is kind of like seen as a good omen, uh, you know, a good luck gesture from t Lady Luck Tamora. So... After a little bit of a break, um, you get back outside and breathe the night air. And you can hear conversations and laughter in the distance and music again. And you just keep on walking. And you come up around the corner of uh, one of these buildings, just wandering around. You, you have no idea exactly where you're at in Luxhold. Uh, you're just wandering and searching and searching. And then you see a cluster of these three men talking, and one is definitely much larger than the rest. And you're kind of thinking to yourself, oh, is that, is that him? No way. Like, is that him? And he is pointing, and these two men nod in agreement, and then they walk off in the direction where this man was pointing. And this man turns around and sees you staring at him. You know, you're only like maybe about 100 feet away. Um, and he sees you like just as you stop short around the building and you're staring at him and he looks up at you and sure enough, you see this burly man with this thick black beard. Um, the man of your dreams. No, <laughs> the man, the man, I have to say, if it's me, it's not, a, I don't have a thick black beard. It's, it's scruffy. It's like, Oh, it's scruffy. It's a very Sorry, scruff. It, it yeah, is you. Very scruffy yeah, it, face. It's, yeah. it's Gideon. Okay, so it's a scruffy uh, beard. Definitely the scruffiness. Ch chiseled stands face, out to you. scruffy, Chis scruffy. Okay, chiseled face. Scruffy nerd. Um, now, do you wear a helmet all the time, or is that more for like combat that you'll wear a helmet? Yeah, I'll, uh, during guard duty, no. I will wear typical light armor or even just basic clothes or whatever insignia. Whatever, okay. but no, if it's in battle, it's full plated armor. But right now, I'm not in full plated armor. Okay, you full plated. clearly see my clothes. face. Yeah, think... well, chainmail, whatever you chain know. Mail. Yeah, chainmail, but yeah, you'd have like a, a a helmet to go along with it. So it, it makes sense yeah. that you probably wouldn't wear the helmet when you're on guard, but right. you know the chainmail, you can wear that. You're hoping to eventually afford to be able to get a plate mail. Oh, armor. I have yeah. idea. <laughs> kind day. of a dream. I'm One day. day. But yeah, so um, you look over Gideon and you see this man who kind of looks like he's glowing with this faint ambient light from under his hood you can see silver hair spilling out from his hood and you even think you see his eyes like this bluish sapphire color and he's just staring at you and it's not the first time you've seen like an asimar um magical creatures but you you definitely recognize him as an asimar um mm -hmm. but he's staring at you 
Well, I pay no attention, and I look the other way. Okay. Gideon turns away, uh, seemingly, you know, just... He's he's at work. He's on duty, and he's uh, trying to protect citizens, and uh, you know, doing good. But you know, you have this overwhelming feeling that he's like your best friend. Yeah, right? he's That's, like your best friend. no, seriously. Like you instantly. I dare you, have, you to approach me. You have me. this feeling. You have this instant feeling that, like, you don't know what it is, but you just have this bond with him. Like, man, he's my best friend. That's the kind of feeling that you have inside. And you finally see this guy that you dreamt about that Mikel sent you to go find. And you don't know why, but somehow he's intertwined with your destiny and your fate um, and eventually achieving your vengeance. Right. And so, slightly annoyed that he turned away. <laughs> but I will raise up my palm and at the same time the, my ring will glow. And it's like, we will have words. Are you close to me or are you still 100 feet away? He's, yeah, uh, did you move closer or did you, are you still like 100 feet away? No, I'm, I'm slowly approaching him because I, I noticed him. I noticed he's the one in the vision. So I'm approaching okay. him at walking speed, let's say. Uh, All right. Okay, so Gideon, I, you, look, uh, you look over and you hear him say that, uh, that we will have words. And you look over and you think you see a faint glow of blue light on his ring. I don't know if maybe you would think that he's casting a spell at you or something. I don't know. But I still, I look, I, I, I kind of glance over my shoulder and I don't give a fuck and I keep doing about my business. <laughs> okay. You realize this is my character, man. Like no, he's, no, no. you have to approach me. If you don't, I'm not going to say a damn thing to you. Okay. Unless so you're I, hurt or something. It's hard to get, no. man. Okay. Um, okay. So I agree with so I grew a little irritated, only because I know this is what Mikhail has given me the vision of. I see the, the scruffy beard and yep. a tall, stalwart-type man. And I kind of grab him on his left-hand shoulder. <laughs> oh, fuck, dude. Oh, you don't want to do that, but okay. Do it. Right. <laughs> <laughs> but when I grab, but when I grab him, it's not, it's not a threatening grab. It's kind of like sometimes it's kind of like hey. you just rest your hand on his shoulder. Sometimes you gotta fight for love, man. Come on, it's a, it's, it's kind of like hey, <laughs> heck and, yeah. And this this man looks at me, and when he looks at me, my hood is just right over my right eye. And my sapphire eye is like so brilliant and, and sapphire's blue. But it meets up with his blue eye. Almost like we kind of connect. It's like we must have words. All right, so I feel the presence of someone touching my shoulder, and immediately I want to fucking thing. And I turn to my left and look with my dead cold stare, and I look at you, and I notice that you have... Very similar eyes. You both have fucked up eyes? And I say... No. Why are you touching me? <clears throat> and then one, once him and I meet eye to eye, like, single eye to single eye, to what I kind of give that renown to, is him having the single eye. I cast my hood back, and when that, when that does happen... My halo approaches, and both my eyes grow just like sapphire blue. It's like, I was told to meet you. You are worthy. You have strength. Yeah, of course I do, but I don't know who the hell you are. <laughs> yeah. That's great. What do you want? And you better take your fucking hand off my shoulder. <laughs> <laughs> do not threaten me, human. You think I'm some <laughs> rival. <laughs> Behold. You best friend, or is this your rival, man? I don't know. <laughs> you don't realize who you're fucking with. That's my point, man. It's like, I'm a savage. You have to come no, to me ex subtle. No, no, exactly. But we, you don't know who I am either. But at the same time, it's like... <clears throat> you're driven by a purpose. You have to find the right I words with a, me. I have a purpose. You are worthy. You have combat experience. Dude, this man's I need your help. I don't have time for this. Ooh. What he, well, he you? said, he, yeah, he needs your help. Okay. I don't have time for this. I'm busy. I have things I'm doing. I don't even talk to people who 
You're lucky I didn't beat your ass in the street. What is exactly that you need from me? And as you try to disembark upon my presence, my halo grows pure gold and orange. It's just, it's just like I'm almost full of rage. How the fuck did you? Play halo? <laughs> I pissed you off, really. Okay. <laughs> Both my eyes grow with sapphire blue. They're radiant. They pierce through you, and it's like you are the one that will help me. You have oh, you much do strength. what? I don't okay, even now, know. Okay, now at this you. point, at this point, Gideon, as you say, help you do what? And you're kind of like, dude, you're wasting my time. I'm trying to do a job here. I'm trying to protect the citizens here. It's a busy night. You know, I sent my other two guys off to go check the alleyways and stuff, make sure everything's good and and safe, um, that nothing bad's going on. And you're just kind of getting a little bit irritated, but he's telling you that, you know, you're, you've been chosen, uh, you know, you're, you, you need to help me, and like all this stuff. And you're just kind of like, whatever, dude, like quit touching me. But then you <laughs> hear this voice call out from down the street, help, help, someone help me, help me. And you look over and you see this man stumbling and he's holding his face like this. And he looks over and he sees you as he recognizes your uniform and that you are a guard and he says guard guard you must help me and you see that he has a wet glistening of blood all over his hand and he's holding his face and he comes up and approaches you what has happened to you what is going on and he says oh I, i've been robbed I, i've been robbed you must help me and he says that they almost killed me i, I managed to get away he says, some ruffians just down a few streets. And he says, they took my sword. It's a family heirloom. You, hurry, we must get it back. And he like, huh, he's spitting and he keeps holding his face. And there's just like blood dripping out of his All mouth. Right. I bring out a cloth from some my side pocket. I say here, cover your blood. We'll go retrieve the sword. Now, I got to say a few things here. So... Conflicts in the city, you know, people getting robbed. That's not an uncommon thing. It happens a lot. Um, so, of course, a few questions that just to put it out there that maybe you might want to ask him is like kind of like standard police report type stuff, right? Like, well, like what was the description of the, pre you know, whatever. Exactly. Okay. What was the description? Okay. Like all this all right. stuff. Like, so what, let me say. Like what would you, yeah. What does he look like? Is he... Elvin, is he halfling? Is he tiefling? Is he what is he? What does he look like? Oh, there was, it was three of them. Three of them. Uh, they had hoods on. I didn't get a good look, uh, but, but no, one of them. One of them. Yeah, he had a silver eye. Hmm. Like, it was the strangest Wait. things. He he looked at me, and I I looked at him dead in the face. Do I he do laughed. I have any knowledge of that? Okay, now. I mean, I would have Kelshin, some obvious. Kelshin and Ash, okay? You guys are walking, trying to be a little bit stealthy through the streets, uh, or at least maybe Ash. Kelshin, you're pretty you know, sure of yourself. You're probably not necessarily being stealthy, but you're just walking, trying to get to the address. You guys are starting to approach not too good of an area. Well, you did approach not too good area, that district that you're supposed to go to. Yeah. Now, you round a corner and you walk, and you see this Asimar who has his hand on the shoulder of a guard and this guard you guys are kind of like well wait a minute is that guard going to whoop some ass or what like yeah because this guard seems irritated and he even says like get your hand off of me and you're just kind of like oh man touching a guard like that's that's uh that's a good way to get your face beat in you know <laughs> you know you guys are just kind of thinking that but then you you hear this call for help and you guys can't help but notice this man come up and his face is all bloodied and he's he's in bad shape and he's stumbling and he sees the guard he doesn't even pay you guys any attention he sees the guard and goes straight to the guard saying that the guard you know you have to help me that he was robbed now you guys were walking past at this point when gideon says well what did they look like what did these perpetrators look like um and this he suddenly mentions that one of them had a silver eye. 
or an orb in his head that looked well, like how, an eye. How far away are Ash and uh, Oh, they're, they're walking by. They're like 30 feet away. Okay, so I'll leave that up to one of them to say something. Yeah, so you guys, uh, you guys hear that, and you guys look at each other. Uh, Ash and Kalshin, you guys, plain as day, heard that. You guys look at each other. Yeah. And you know that, of course, like, the guard normally... So, <clears throat> just to continue on a little bit more here with the dialogue, Gideon, uh, what would you ask next after he says what they look like? Which... Because Okay. Yeah, the next challenge you is give me like, the where the heck would they be? Yeah, Which like, direction, direction did they go? Okay, and he points. He's like, they were off over this way. Uh, he says, please, it's my, my, my dad's sword. He gave it to me before he died. It's a family heirloom. They took it. He says, I must have it back. And, uh, you know, he's just, he's kind of, not exactly in shock, but he's just like, Panicked. rambling on and he's panicked and he's just like you can tell he's wide-eyed maybe he's gone through shot tail i mean he, he yeah he's he's bleeding out of his face he got beat up pretty bad um says they all laughed at me and he says please help and uh you guys hear all this and you know you saw him point over into the direction where you're pretty sure Ooh. ash you're pretty good at um you know d- directions and you know finding stuff um yeah. you're pretty sure the address is right in the vicinity of where he was pointing. But of course, to pinpoint an exact house would be pretty difficult for the guard to do. Right. I'm trying to tell you and say, looks like our bounty is uh, drawing some attention to him. Cal uh, Sheen says nervously, indeed, this could be bad. And he says, we cannot let the guards get all the glory. That defeats the purpose. <laughs> He's trying yeah. to think... Because you guys know if the guard takes him in and is able to find him, take him in, you guys probably won't get your bounty. And Cal Sheen looks a little distressed. He's just sitting there. He's trying to think of something. He's like, oh, what do we do? Hmm. So and to get, can, I, get can I know that, like, well, who the fuck are those two people over well, there? Well, 30 feet away, you notice that there's, like, a halfling and a human that were walking by, but, you know, they're probably just onlookers, you're maybe thinking, but they stopped and they seem to be listening to the conversation, and they seem to be discussing something amongst themselves. I, you know, maybe they're, like, relishing the excitement of this guy who got his face beat up. Uh, right. You know, maybe I, I they're tourists. Out, who knows? I would scream out, you two! And I'd get their attention. Yep. I'd say, come here! <laughs> And Kalshin looks down at the little halfling Ash, and he says, oh, now you've done it. And he says, all right, I'll think of something. Just let me do the talking. And, Get over here at uh, once. And he says, and he looks up back out at the guard, and says, hi, have I disturbed you, good guard of Tamora? And he well, says, I do not mean you any harm. And he, said, <laughs> and he just begins to walk towards you. <laughs> Clearly, okay, so, so this before, man has been beaten up. We need to yeah. know exactly what's going on. He's pointed in the direction of someone who's attacked him. You two seem suspicious to me. Yeah, so Gil, uh, you know, you were trying to like describe to uh, Gideon. You still don't even know his name, but you're trying to describe to him. Look, you, you, I need you to help me. Like I have this like divine purpose, and you are involved with it. Like, um, but you get interrupted by definitely. You know, your heart is going out to this guy who got beat up and mugged and stuff in his family early. That, that kind of like, <clears throat> oh, crap, that sucks, you know. Um, you know, he got beat up. Uh, probably could have gotten killed. But I don't know if but, maybe you'd be thinking, yeah, maybe I'll put this discussion on hold a bit. Maybe I should try to help out. Yeah, Ooh. so my discussion to get in will be put on hold. So as I notice that people need help, I'm not actually in the combat so I'll, Rethrow my hood back over my head, kind of disguising myself a little bit, concealing my halo. And that's whenever enter Ash and enter Kalshin. Well, I think I would be, I imagine you would probably be like, well, it doesn't matter how I imagine, but you might have mentioned it to me one more time. And I said, look, if you want to help, let's go find who this ever is. We'll talk about this later. Yeah. Okay, so as I cloak myself, because I hate the way I'm seen by mortals. I will lend you aid. 
Right. You too. If it bleeds, we can kill it. I'm sure you, you too. <laughs> Young man and halfling, join me. We are going to find out who's done this. You stay here. And then I give him a little rag to well, keep so, his nose covered. Hold on, you don't know too much about this human and yeah. halfling. It could be Taurus from Mystica, for all you know, just loving the violence here. Yeah. Yeah. So you don't know yet whether they're okay, right. talking about or not. a pushy guard. You do your well, own. Well, there's job. no way within like a few like conversations I could trust them anyway. Like at this point, like well, say something. Except, except, yeah. hold on. There's one thing you'd have no idea other than the general vicinity of where these crooks are, or at least where this crime occurred. To find where they went after that, like. This is anyone's guess, really. And you're kind of thinking, like, yeah, this happens all the time. Like, it's hard for us to catch these guys. You know, it's not like there's security cameras and stuff. You can be like, oh, there they are. <laughs> They're right there. Uh, We've got a drone like, flying around. When they get mugged, like, yeah, you get a description and stuff. But unless they, you see them soon, they're probably going to get away with it. Um, you know, maybe put a word out with the patrol and they can keep their eyes open. But... With my walkie talkie. Yeah, you, you lack you lack the location, and that's kind of the biggest problem at this point in helping this guy. Um, so yeah, so anyways, there's these two that were kind of gawking and eavesdropping on the conversation here and stopped and uh you told them to come over. So Ash and Kalshin, you guys make your way over to uh the guard and this Asimar, who quickly then puts a hood over his head, back over his head to kind of cloak himself a little bit. Uh, what do you say, Kalshin, since you said I'll do the talking? Yeah, so he says, basically, yes, what is it that you need, guard? I need to know what you overheard. I need to know what you know about the person that has been injured here. And he looks at the injured person, he says, I'm afraid I only know as much. So he you says, cut out, we were just overhearing your rookies. I didn't, I didn't hear what as you much said. As I do. Uh, you cut out, CJ. I didn't hear what you said. Oh, he just said, well, I'm afraid you know as much as I do, good guard, as we were just overhearing and we're listening to a commotion. As much as I don't care to talk to you, I have a hard feeling knowing that you're not telling me the truth. Okay, the way that so, you were staring. On. Now, CJ, um, Okay, Kalshin is a member of the Azure Brotherhood, and you know that you have this bounty, and you know that the guard probably is not going to know the location. Yeah. But he's, he's like in the middle spark. of the board, okay? Yeah, I know. Right. He's gonna sp I know what you're trying to get at. He's going to spark an idea, or an idea to get them to group up to go and deal with this. He's just okay. waiting for the right it, sentence. It's just I that know. you just got done saying that you know as much as I do. or, or Right. So. It was just... So you know, you can show that bullshit. you're of the Azure Brotherhood and that you are actually seeking this guy out to bring him to justice. Mm -hmm. And so, I anyways. Know. But say what you what were you going to say? So, with at the end of what he said, he says, but if I did know something, and he says, perhaps you could enter entertain me on what was going on over here, as I would certainly like to know. First off. What is that badge that I see you on your right shoulder? You are the Azure Guard. You look over and you see the silver pin that Pavel gave you, and it's still on your chest. And he says, oh, don't worry about it. It's just for fashion. <laughs> don't placate me, young boy. I swear I will fucking kill you in this street. <laughs> what do you know about a man with a silver eye? If we group together now, we might be able to catch him the longer we talk, the more time's wasted, he may get away. What can so, you tell me? Truly, Elshin is the... like, before uh, Kalshin gets a chance to speak up again, Ash just steps in. Wow, I like this guy. You know right where he lives. You want to come help us get him? We're going to get a bounty on him. And, I didn't and even Kelsey notice you, looks, little one. And Kalshin just <laughs> looks at her and says, you idiot... <laughs> <laughs> and he says, as your mentor, you sit to shut up. And he just looks up and he says, yes, so we know who the perpetrator is, most likely. And he says, but what of it? And he says, we, I was going to inform you anyways, but you, if we go there together, you have to promise. 
that you will not take my fame. And he says, this is about me and I guess her. And he points at the little two-footer down right well, next to him. And the Azure Brotherhood, if you use the... And, the Azure, and to the Azure Brotherhood, of course. I need to take him in, not you. Uh, so you know the Azure Brotherhood. You know that they seek out and, you know, these criminals basically who try to escape justice they go out and they try to bring him in so definitely you know them saying that um seems like a pretty big deal and he, he says of course if you do help us there will be a re reward in for you all i ask is is that you give most of the favor to me if anyone asks and i give a very hard and cold stare a very negative presence and i say i don't care about fame i'm here for timora you we'll take continue. it all, young one. Just lead me to where you think this man is so that we can bring justice. Uh, and he says, ah, oh, I like this one as well. He says, uh, very well. <laughs> <laughs> and he says, uh, and what of your friend here? And he gestures to the hooded figure that I think I saw as an SMR. Yep. I will say justice. Will be so you cut out, Jeremy. What, what did you say? I would say justice will be done. And is his arm still on my shoulder? Because I'm getting really no. pissed no. off right now. <laughs> okay. And I cock my eye, my left eye, which is blue, and I look at him and I say, fine, I don't know you. I don't even know your name, but you may tag along. So do you want to say your name, Gil? Do you want to introduce yourself? <laughs> I would say, huh. Human, I'm Gil Galad. I will help you in your quest. Gil. Yes. Join us. As you may, just don't get in my fucking way. <laughs> don't intimidate me, human. <laughs> right. Okay, this is not getting off to a really good relation. We're not. Alright, all right. so. So, <laughs> cue music. Ding, 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 ding. Gil Galad joins the party. Yeah, right. Yeah. <laughs> Ash, you're right. join the party. All, All right. right, Angel Face and Mr. Grouchy. Let's go get this guy. <laughs> Angel Face and Mr. <laughs> Grouchy. <laughs> Grouchy pants. Listen, uh, little one. <laughs> okay. Oh, yes. So, you guys... Um, so, the, the, the young man with the beat-up face... You notice that he's tagging along, and uh, he, he just he's, he keeps saying, We gotta hurry. Please, find my sword, please. I, I need to get my sword back. And uh, yeah, but he, he's tagging, tagging along back a ways, but he's definitely following you guys. Is Kaush and Kaush uh, Oh, go ahead. I'm very intent on having him stay where he's at. I gave him a rag to cover his face, and I'm saying, Stay. As a part of the order, is that going to impede your story at all? If not, then he can tag along. It's fine. No, but... no, no. You know, he doesn't have to tag along. Uh, but he's just. Uh, but if you recover the sword, how will you find me? Stay here. Stay okay, in this exact uh, location. We will come right back. I'll, I'll, I'll stay right here then. I'll stay right okay. here. And he looks around, and uh, you then see two of your patrolmen come back, and they're within sight. And you're kind of thinking, ah, I'll have these two patrolmen keep watch over this man because he's kind of shaken up. You don't really want to leave him alone because uh, you don't yeah. want to take the chance that he gets spooked and he follows you anyways and then right. gets killed or something. So you see two of your uh, patrolmen uh, that you're like in charge over and they see you and they start walking over and they're seeing that there's a man sitting down that you just got to talk to and he has a bloodied up face and he's you know, staring down at the ground. Uh, and they come up and they say, uh, Officer Gideon, sir, says, oh, what's going on here? Zophar Philman, go look over this man. Keep him protective. We were going to retrieve something. He's been beat up and robbed. We will be right back. Look over him. Uh, as, as you wish, sir. And Do then, not let him become of any more harm. And then one of the other guys is like, who are those other guys? <laughs> you know, as you guys are walking away, you know, one of the guys are like, who are those guys? As he's like clearly indicating the other three people that are with Officer Gideon here. So 
yeah, you guys uh, depart going through the winding streets, passing many different buildings, and you eventually come across uh, from a distance. Ash, you recognize, like, you're pretty sure the address, like, okay, that building right up there, that's the one, that's what, that, what we're looking for. And yeah. as you point that out, um, you guys notice three guards up front, and there's like these... Um, not my like guards, a little obviously, bit of, right? There, there's no... These okay. look like ruffian, like, ruffian like brigands, okay. or like... Ruffians. Just ruffians, like ruffians, okay. not very well dressed. They're you know they definitely don't look that clean. Like maybe they haven't bathed in a while. But they also have okay. these bottles in their hand and they're being a bit loud. And they're just like, ha, 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 ah, that's right, we smacked him up good. And you know they're just like, you know, eh, you know, and they're drinking and stuff and just kind of just being obnoxious. Um, yeah, let's see what we got here. Oh yes, map change. So, uh, okay, we in. still technically have a half hour, don't we? Actually, you, uh, um, well, we can still do some dialogue, right? We don't have to go straight. Yeah, yeah. Right. So, Giddy, you, you hear whispering like f over four feet below you. You just hear this voice saying, "This place. They usually have eight guards and a dog on patrol. We should be careful." Yep. And he says, Kalshin says, uh, well, there's no use in sneaking in then. And he says, very well. Let us walk up to the front door and let me do the talking. And then he looks down at the halfling, please. Hold on, I'm going to message Ash something. Ash looks up at you and, and says, what about eight guards and a dog makes you think there's no point in sneaking? He says, ah, oh, you forget where we're at. He says, nothing like a little bit of coin can't change their mind. And he kind of uh, jingles his little pouch victoriously, like he's already won the battle. You, do you really think you can pay these guys more than they're already being paid? He's just like, oh, look where they're living. What, like a couple silver each? Oh, yes, I can easily outpay that. Besides, what do you think is going to happen when you go knocking on the door? Do you just say we are you? visitors, of course. I, after all, your guy did leave the letter saying... Do you think they don't have a back door, that he's just going to run out? Hmm. He Holy says, man, that is perhaps. The guard. Clearly, they'll notice me. So this I didn't put it on the map, but there's like some crates and stuff kind of outside the front here. Um, you know, they're sitting on them. They're just kind of being rowdy and just carrying on. Uh, this is definitely the front door. Um, you can kind of see a little bit. There's little slits of windows here around. Um, yeah, and it's two stories high, by the way. Uh, it's just not a single mm. level. The bottom oh, level seems to be made of like stone and brick, and then the second story is made just of wood. It looks like it's one of those, you know, types of houses. Um, okay. okay. I'm having working a flashbacks, Casey. <laughs> right? Yeah, I know. <laughs> I really yep. don't want to die here. <laughs> yeah, there's going to be some fucking so, archers. I already know it. <laughs> so, uh, Kalshin proposes an idea, and he says, hmm. You two look a little too suspicious, especially you there, guard. And he says, perhaps you should stay here and let me and Ash over here do the talking. And he says, well, me do the talking. The talking of what? What are you okay. possibly so, going to say? How far away do you want the guard? So in the distance, you know, like, we'll just say... Within 150, fucking... 150 feet away, you see the house. And they're just kind of caught up in their own, like, being rowdy, telling jokes, and you know, just socializing with each other in the front of this uh, this building here. Um, so, do you want the patrolman and this Asimar Gill and getting to like stay back, and you and yeah. Ash go and talk to these guys, or yeah. do you want them to kind of? Oh man! Well, yeah, that's, okay. that's the so idea. You, you, so that's what Kalshin says, but Gideon, you're like thinking, are you freaking crazy? These are a bunch of ruffians. You know, you're, 
you're going to get yourself killed. <laughs> if like, you don't roll a 20 on percent or inti whatever, intimidation or deception, you're going to look swarmed by a bunch of fucking people. Yeah. First off, is what my I would say, but my character would say, first off, you're not in charge. You have no <laughs> authority or jurisdiction over what my fucking group does. We will go and do this. And then I stare at you with my blue eye, and I say, how dare you try to take command of this party? Oh, nice. Oh, man. Yeah, a so piece of you. work. <laughs> <laughs> wow. He says, I did not mean to upset you, guard, but I believe this is for the better of all of us. And he says, I believe there is a way to get rid of these three without any conflict whatsoever. And he says, all it takes is a bit of gold. But however, seeing your face, that could pose a bit of a problem, being a guard of Tamora. And in fact, it could cause our target to flee at a moment's notice. And that would not benefit any of us. And he says, especially our guild. And you wouldn't want to have your reputation tarnished after letting someone so important get away, would you? Clearly, the man you seek, this silver eye, is not in the front guarding. He's held up in this stronghold. If the three flee for whatever reason of mine, or anybody else's, he's still in the stronghold. Yes, I know. No, he's talking about our target fleeing out the back door. Well, then yeah. we shall obliterate them all. <laughs> yeah, so Fine. many buildings, uh, many buildings, especially ones of this size, actually have more than one entrance, and so there's normally a back door as well. Yeah, I so see here. You guys are coming from the angle where you were coming from. You're seeing the front perspective. But yeah, you don't, you don't know where the back door is and you don't know if there's any guards back there. But that is a valid concern with the fact that, you know, right. what about the back door? Because if this guy gets spooked, he might just head out and take that young man's family heirloom with him. Well, look, I'm not going to fucking be 100, 150 feet away. I'm going to be right here at the edge where it's not near a window or a door, in my opinion, if that's true. And I will let you two go and do the talking in hopes um, that maybe you can bribe them yeah, out of it. Hold on. How would you get there? Where are we coming from, Barry? Yeah, I don't know where we're coming oh, from. Okay. You guys are coming from this area. Yeah, so that's going to be impossible without you getting noticed. So. Oh, okay. Well, shit. How fucking far away is that? Hey, Barry, I gotta zoom out. Can you lay down uh, tokens? Well, I oh, you out. guys can do that. Yeah, go ahead and drag your character sheets and place your tokens. So is there like a corner where we're talking right now so they don't see us? Uh, you guys are 150 feet away. Um, they're occupied with their own... So we are wide open then. Yeah. Wait, no, wait. Where we're at, that's only like 60 feet away. Well, he's just over 150. So we're fifty feet away. Yeah. So. So there's other buildings and stuff. I just didn't put them on the map because uh, I was up super late last night preparing all this stuff. So I wasn't going to get too detailed here. So there, you know, this isn't like there's a massive plot of land and this is the only building around. There are other buildings around. So you're 150 feet away. You can just see the building in plain sight, and you can see all these uh, ruffian guards up front. And definitely that's kind of a good indicator that this is the right place because that's the only one in this area that has these ruffians kind of standing post. So yeah. I would say this though, that the, the guardians with their laughing and their drunkenness, clearly they've been drinking and they're dumb. Maybe I don't know this just talking out loud. There's, there might be a hard chance that you can convince them of anything. If they've all, if they're already committed to their duty. We'll see. Ash, Ash picks, uh, pipes up at this moment says, why don't, why don't we just go in the back? How are we going to go in the back? Isn't this a wall right here? What is this? Yeah, those well, are walls, but there's guys, a door. Um, if you guys want well, to give me a couple minutes, I could scout around the place real yeah, quick. There you go. Can actually do this intelligently. She's, he says, you think it's safe enough to do that? Do you actually think you could do it? He looks down at you. Hey, Barry, I'm going to just step behind uh, Gideon. Oh, this, sorry, this black bit right here that you guys can't see right here yeah. um, is the second story of this building here. It's just that I had to place it and place stuff in it. Oh, okay. So I needed mm -hmm. a place to put it. So there's actually nothing there right there. But oh, oh, okay. 
Hold on, let me reveal quite a bit more here. Yeah, it's it'll be really easy for me to scout around from a distance. And there's lots of buildings and other people around this place too. Uh, maybe not so many people, because most of the tourists and the people, they kind of stay in the nicer areas where all the games are and stuff. But definitely there's buildings, you know, lots of people who live here. Um, anyways. All right, so, Casey, I clearly don't want to scare the main target away. So if you want to try some form of diplomacy with these fucking drunkard guards. Mm -hmm. Hold on, Ash, Ash was going to scout out at a distance. Yeah, Ash is going to scout. Right? But I did ask it, ask her if she really thinks she can do it. Wait, do you have any rope, Matt, Mike? Rope? Uh, I don't think I have any rope. I was yeah. just thinking if there's any way you could, like, kind of bar the exit that you might find. That'd be pretty bulky, I think, for a halfling to carry around 50 feet of hemp and rope. Yeah. Well, then how about we do this? Ash and I go scout together over here. Are you stealthy in your heavy armor? Not really. No, I'm not stealthy at all. Not really. Okay, another... I'm going to stay here. Go ahead. Go ahead and scout. Well, as the group discusses, if you want to scout, go ahead and scout. So, yeah, as you uh, you say that, though, Casey, I just, like, step behind uh, Gideon and just break eyesight for a second, and you can't see me. <laughs> and do what? You break eyesight and what? Then he can't see me. because I can't see him. So he's Gideon. just standing behind him, basically, and I can't see him. He well, asked if I, if I felt like I could actually sneak around. Okay, uh, so roll, said, roll a stealth in. Roll a stealth check, because you're going to hide. So you're going to do a hide, roll a stealth. Oh. You got lucky, right? You got halfling's luck, something? That's only if he rolls a one. Um, oh. Yeah, but I'm actually behind his leg. I'm not, like, coming out yet. Yeah, but how that works is you use a medium-sized creature as some concealment, which allows you to hide. Right? So that allows right. you to roll a stealth check. Uh, I think Gideon is just pumped up with adrenaline here, and he's angry, and he's super alert, and yeah, I mean, his passive perception is 12, so you needed to beat that. Um, he, yeah, well, he doesn't notice anything different. He, he looks at you. But, I mean, it makes sense that you should probably, I mean, you're small, so you're going to be less conspicuous than... Well, I wasn't saying I was hiding. I was saying I just disappeared behind him because I'm so small. Like, I'm literally smaller than his leg. <laughs> so when his leg passes in front of me, he can't see me. And when his leg goes to the other side, he can see me because I felt my stealth check. But, yeah. Wait, is he actually doing the stealth thing now? I thought he was just demonstrating it to me. Well, yeah, yeah. but he was, he was trying to disappear, right? He, he was oh. trying to hide. Well, then why didn't I say something if it didn't look good? That no, I never said I was. <laughs> oh, so but right, anyway, like, wait, are you? Yeah. Is Ash actually gonna go scout? I don't know what's happening yeah. right now anymore. So, but I'm, yeah, I'm gonna scout around just around that perimeter of the house real quick, but from a distance, Perry. Okay. Yep. So you notice. One guard out here. And he seems to have some sort of food or something in his hand. He's taking bites of it. Not there, sure are what of, it is. there are a lot of windows like on the second yep. story. Uh, yes, there are. So I see like movement in the windows. Oh, that's a good question. Let's see if you see movement anywhere. There is some movement. Uh, let's see which window that you see. Um, hmm. How to show this. Okay, I'm just going to reveal some areas here so I can show you. So you see some movement right up. All right, 
right here on the second story. Uh, but it happened really fast, and uh, it, some humanoid figure like just walked past. So would that be like realistically like right here? Yep, the second story up above there, exactly. Yep. So if you were to imagine this lower section here, if that was just stacked on top of this section up here. Okay. Yep. So I'll, I'll come back and relay all this information to everybody. Okay. Do we want to have someone like guarding the back when, someone, when we approach the front? Or what? how do we want to approach this? I think, Casey, honestly, if you really want to initiate conversation with one, two, and three, if you really want to walk up there, mm -hmm. I think yep. I think the rest of us should stay back. Ash can... Um, well, he wants the halfling. He wants Ash with her. Yeah. All right. Well, then you guys go initiate the conversation now. And then we, me and um, Gil will chill back here. Okay, so you guys are going to stay like 150 feet away from a distance? Like, you can see what's going on, but I mean, you're far enough yeah. away that you're not really raising suspicion with these guards. I'm just worried that if combat ensues, it's going to take us three fucking turns to get even close to them. That's a risk! Yep. It's a risk. Yep. Who knows? <sighs> but right, if you man. get closer, if they notice that there's a guard, it might spook them. So that someone mentioned that, and that's a definitely a valid concern. So, I'm can guessing... I, can you do a check on... Obviously, they're drinking, and they're all fucked up over there, and they're chatting and acting like idiots. Like, What's their perception of p other people approaching? Is there any way we can do a you check on that? You don't know. You, nope. don't. you don't know. <laughs> you don't know. Yeah, don't oh, know. my God. Is there a way we can not be 150, maybe like 80 feet away or something? No, it's probably sure, best you, you're really far. Of course. You can try. You can, you can decide to move closer, but, you know. Kelsheen's going to motion you to stay back. To so stay here and we'll be back. You, you are a or six foot four burly man who, uh, heavy armor, that's, you know. Heavy armor lets you know you're a soldier. All right, fine. 100, 100, can we say 100? Can we agree just with just 100 for now? Your tech. You want to move 50 feet closer? I would like to move. Jeremy? You should not. Yeah. 100 feet. Does the Asimar go with you? The Asimar and I all, I think we'd like to be 100 feet away. All right, so to be clear, because I'm, I'm confused on what's going on here, too. So, Kalshin and Ash are going, or uh, who's yes. going to talk? Or Kalshin, you're going by yourself? No, Kalshin... And, and Ash. Ash. Okay. So the Kalshin two of you are going to go. go. I'm so and, if you... and then Gil and Gideon will be 100 feet away just observing. So if you two go up ahead. Uh, so the party's now split at this point, right? So um, yeah. Kalshin and Ash are up ahead approaching those three guards. Actually, Gil and Goliath will actually talk to. So, do I have a... Go, go ahead, Casey. Oh, I was just going to ask, do I have a pin of my guild on me right right now? Do I normally wear it? Usually. No, you have a fucking bounties, a bounty yeah, okay. emblem on your goddamn chest, and you're you the one... Do. Who... <laughs> so I'm going to remove that emblem then, but... The, the I silver want... pen, okay. The, the silver pennant, but... Before we get too close to them, I say wait for about like fifty feet away. He's gonna look at the other the pin that that guy gave him, mm -hmm. and he's gonna look at Ash and be like, "So what does this exactly mean?" And he says, "What is this? How can I use this?" And he says, "Quickly before we get too close, tell me everything you know." This is this will ensure success or not. So you want to be 50 feet away. So go ahead and move your tokens 50 feet away. So the other two, Gil and Gideon, you guys said you wanted to move 100 feet away from the guards. So you're moving 50 feet forward, right? So as we're moving 50 feet forward, like away from them, he's going to ask Ash about that. Okay. Yeah, but Gil and Gideon are moving closer. So I'm going to go ahead and that, and let's see what happens. 
All right, so you're 50 feet away. Well, as we're getting to the 50 feet away. So, Gillian, Gideon, you guys are off the map a bit a ways. Yeah, okay? we're not even, yeah. Yeah, so you're going to be 100 feet away from So, yeah, just by like 10 feet, you're yeah, off the map. I'd tile well. off. Yeah. One or two, we'll just say one or whatever. Okay, so what do you say when you're at this distance right here? So she basically looks down at the ash and says, is there any useful information you can give me about this pen? Okay, you look up, Ash, and you see the silver pen that Pavel apparently gave him. Does that recognize and, it? Yeah, it's Pavel's pen. Um, um, Ash looks up at uh, Cal Sheen, and she just says, uh, it's just a <clears> pen <throat> he uses to uh, mark people on occasion. It's... He says, that is he says, that is unfortunate. He says, I guess I'll be having to wing this one, like all of them. And he says, let us, let us begin this conversation. And he motions on forward. We just, uh, boy, we go. All right. So this could be a good time to stop. <laughs> yeah, be, oh, it will okay. give so you okay. some time yeah. to think about what you want to say. <laughs> and it will let Gil and Gideon carefully think about uh, the next three comet phases. What trying to get to you. They want to do. Yeah. Um, yeah. Hopefully this is a good Ash. idea. So, Ash, I'm assuming uh, you're going to stand directly behind Cal Sheen, right? Yes. Okay. You so, correct. Cal Sheen, you approach these guards, and they, of course, you get their attention as you approach and one of them just looks out and says, ah, Look at this guy! <laughs> what do you want? Get lost before we pick you clean of all your valuables. And they start laughing. <laughs> and, and he we'll, just we'll just, kind of on. puts his we'll, hand... We'll, we'll oh, just leave off with that. Oh, fuck. Oh. fuck. Okay. <laughs> okay. Yeah, we'll uh, leave off with that. I'm 